first team all Big 12 conference defensive back Darren Williams of the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Today it's a star studded event in Stillwater and the heroes are more than ready for their close ups wide open touchdown Texas Tech QB Graham Harrell has thrown for over 1000 yards in just three games. He leads the nation in completions per game and touchdowns with 14. OSU's sure-handed wide receiver Adarius Bowman is expected to haul in a treasure trove of postseason awards. This big play senior holds the conference single game receiving record of 300 yards. Texas Tech has a standout receiver as well. The freshman sensation Michael Crabtree, who leads the nation in touchdown catches. Texas Tech battles Oklahoma State. The season premiere of the Big 12 Conference Battles are next on FSM. From Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater, Oklahoma, it's Big 12 football presented by Kia Sera. And today, the undefeated Texas Tech Red Raiders match up with the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. On display today, two of the most talented receivers in the entire nation, the true freshman Michael Crabtree and senior Adarius Bowman. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. and welcome once again to Stillwater, Oklahoma. The challenge for the Cowboys coming into the contest today, how do they slow down the nation's leader in total offense, Graham Harrell? It's going to be difficult. You have to change it up, Joel. But, you know, it's hard to get this kid out of rhythm. I mean, he has seen just about every defense you're going to see. Gets the ball out of his foot, hand in about 2.5 seconds, and he knows where to throw the football. His numbers speak for themselves. He's got 75% completion percentage on the season. It's unbelievable. But Zach Robinson, this is only his second can start. Here's a kid, though, that's a great athlete at the quarterback position. He can beat you with his throwing arm as well as his feet. He's a two-way go guy, but don't try to do too much. Three turnovers last week against Troy. Can't do that today. It'll be a hot one in Stillwater. Stay with us. We'll be right back for the conference opener, Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. of years ago here in Stillwater 24-17 the Cowboys hopefully another good one the kickoff is coming up next over and a lot of fun for you as well when it's presented in FSN HD all brought to you by Hitachi so it shapes up I hope it's like four years ago here 51-49 Oklahoma State down to the final play. Tech won the toss. They'll receive. But first, let's head down to Jim Knox with the head coach of the Cowboys. Knoxie. Coach, how in the world do you try to slow down this Texas Tech team, which averaging over 51 points per game? Well, we've got a good plan. Uh, we're going to try to harass the quarterback as much as we can, move him around out of the pocket, and you've got to tackle him in space. They make all the yards after catch most of the time. So we have a good plan. I feel good about it. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Now, I talked about how hot it's going to be. Well, 90, but down in the field a lot hotter than just 90. It's feeling, we talked to some of the OSU people from the athletic department. It'll top 100 degrees before it's all over today. Easily, easily over 100 degrees. The humidity is a little bit of a factor as well. And, and if you haven't done anything to take care of your, your fluid intake during the week, Joel, game time is too late. You have to have the right potassium level in your system that's diet-related, fluid-related all week long. Can't wait till game time, then you're in trouble. L.A. Reid is going back deep, waiting for the kick as Fodge will kick it away. He's second in the Big 12 in punting, but he handles the kickoffs as well. Their placements, it's Jason Ricks. So here we go. The conference opener for Oklahoma State at home against Texas Tech. So Morris is back, along with L.A. Reid, or Ed Britton, rather, is going to be back. Coming over to the near side, L.A. Reed from the five. It's designed to go left. Does he have a lane? Yes. And look out past the 30. They collaborate to get him near the 31-32 yard line. And it was Roderick Johnson down there to make this stop. A return of 27 yards for a team that was just awful last year. And kick returns, one of the worst in the nation, in fact. The defensive end in on the stop. And our Kia Sarah starting lineup led by Graham Harrell, 
the nation's leader in total offense. He's hit 75% of his passes over the first three games this year. Now you question who they face, but still, 75%. Lofty numbers. 14 touchdowns, just two interceptions. 7 to 1 ratio is mind boggling. Woods is going to be the single as they go to four wide receivers, and that's the way they always set up. Pressure on Harrell as they bounce him out of the pocket, almost over the line, and hits Amendola past the midfield strike. So Danny Amendola, son of a high school coach, out of the Woodlands, the Houston area, and what a catch by the senior. And this is why Graham Harrell has only been sacked two times in 161 pass attempts now. He slides around, buys time in the pocket, knows where he is on the football field, and delivers a perfect strike. Sexton not quite able to stay in coverage on Amendola, and, and the play was created by Harrell, and he bought that extra time, and Amendola broke away from Sexton. Michael Crabtree, bottom of your screen. Keep an eye on him. He leads the nation in receptions and also TD catches. Woods inside the 40, down to the 39 for a gain of about three for the junior from McKinney, Texas. Now the starting of well, the other 10, we already saw Graham Harrell. There's Michael Crabtree, and he has already displayed unusual skills for a kid who's right out of high school. When you look at the offensive line, there's only one starter back in those wide splits, and that's Lewis Vasquez. The guard. They are big on the right side, though. A couple of condos right here. Trips over to the far side. Harold on a deep out. That almost like a post corner route. Wide of Lyle Leon, the true freshman from Adeline. And it was available. Nice blitz pickup right there by Shannon Woods. Graham Harold gives him a little pat on his helmet as he walks by. And Harold had to get rid of that football a little bit sooner than he wanted to. That, therefore, the inaccuracy. And that's what you have to do. You have to try to make him get the football out of his hand even quicker than he wants to. And he doesn't get it out quickly. Two to each side this time. Isaiah trips up top of the wide side of the field. Show the blitz from the linebacker. It will be a blitz on Harrell. Has to deliver it in a hurry. And he's got him. It's coming down the sideline for Crabtree. And he's got a first and goal all the way to the nine for a team that's looking to make it four for four. They have scored on each of their first possessions in their first three games. And this is exactly what they wanted to do is get off to a quick start and watch Crabtree run a little pivot route. Man, that's just a, that's just fooling the defensive back Van Sant way, way too much. I mean, that's that's just a simple move on the pivot route. Crabtree established a separation, but that's what he does so well. He has great instincts, a great feel. Uh, he finds separation. He works with space exceptionally well. He's averaging better than 12 yards per, or 12 catches per game. He got 30 that time. Harold, pocket holds up well. Too much time and wide of the intended target, Ed Britton. Sample from El Paso. Uh, is this defensive unit for the Oklahoma State Cowboys going to be challenged? Texas Tech averaging 51 points a game, as Jim Knox just mentioned, and talking to Mike Gundy. Collins, one of the best in the Big 12. Almost nine tackles per game, but they gave up way too many yards last week in a loss at Troy. They gave up 388 yards in the air last week, the most they've given up in four years here. And, of course, Texas Tech, all they do is fill the air with footballs. Collins had 13 tackles last week down at Troy. It'll be second and goal to the nine as they change the play at the line. Harrell, little one inside. Crabtree breaks the tackle. He's in. Touchdown, Texas Tech. There it is. Yards after catch. Just what Coach Gundy was talking about to start the broadcast. And that's what Texas Tech feeds off of. And you cannot let them journey after the reception. And, and, and Mickens did let it happen. Of course, this is a big, strong body kid. Crabtree with his ninth touchdown reception of the season. 6'3", 210 pounds. Harrell with his 15th touchdown pass of the year and only two interceptions. Unreal. Guy that's never missed an extra point, Trilika, at NCAA Stanford. And he puts it through. So it continues. It's 188 straight now for Trilika. Michael Crabtree, what a story. His ninth touchdown reception. The true freshman puts him up. 7-0, Texas Tech. single week and they said geez we got something special here and look at that they have scored every single drive this one today six plays 69 yards uh, five of the plays were for 66 yards in the air one rush for three yards by Woods. 
bringing it back. Yeah, it's going to be Parrish, Cox, or make it Tommy Devereaux. Across the 10, weaving his way. Good return. Up to the 29-yard line for the wide receiver. So that's where the Cowboys will have it for the first time today. Took a long time, though, for Crabtree and the Red Raiders. Minute 27 seconds into the game. <laughs> you talk about up-tempo. And look at look at the look at the numbers for Crabtree. And it, here's, here's the touchdown. He's, he's got he's got nine touchdowns now. And this is only his fourth game. It's only a minute and a half into his fourth game. That is staggering. Dontrell Savage. There's a big boost for the Cowboys. And he scoops his way across the 35, and I bring that up because he's had a pulled muscle in his groin. He has not played the last two games, and he was doubtful coming in even as late as Thursday. Yeah, he was. He was. It was determined he was going to start today based on pre-game warrants. He's got a groin abdominal problem. So that's a pick-me-up. They're down seven to nothing. They've got Savage, the honorable mention All Big 12 performer last year, senior from Columbus, Georgia. He hammered it for eight yards right there. Get him right on schedule. On the long count, Robinson after the play fake. And it'll be Dez Bryant. Three grabs last week. That's his first on the first attempt. Now, he is a true freshman, the young man from Lufkin, Texas. Joel, we have the makings of a track meet here. <laughs> and instead of the baton, we're talking about pigskin. Play action fake. OK, you get eight yards running the football. Now play action fake. Look at Dez Bryant get the separation running a very simple route. I mean, coverage just not secure enough down the football field. The broken coverage right there. An easy pitch and catch for Robinson to get his confidence going. And it's Savage again with a flag down on the near side where they may have lined up offside. It's a gain of a little more than four. Colby Woodlock put him down out of Noble, Oklahoma. Well, did, yeah, did, did uh, Texas Tech line up offside? Hopefully Oklahoma State, from their offensive standpoint, had six men on the line of scrimmage. If they uh, had seven, if they had six, it's an illegal formation. They have to have seven men up in the line of scrimmage. It looks like they're talking to Tech. Oklahoma State may not have had enough people up there. Illegal formation on the offense. Only six men on the, the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Replete first down. Our referee today for the Big 12 is Greg Burks. But rare when Oklahoma State has been able to open at home in conference play. Mike Gundy's going crazy on the line judge who made that call. He said, what are you looking at? We had our receiver up on the line of scrimmage. Come on, cut us a break. One of those pre-snap penalties that you hate as a head coach. Bowman, bottom of your screen. He's the single to the wide side of the field. Out of the gun. Robinson, a strike again. Des Bryant, gain of 13 to the 35. So they get it back. Close to the first down, Marcus Bunton on the coverage. Well, our keys, and defensively now, our key is Sarah. Starting 11 with Texas Tech. Outside, Jake Ratliff is kind of their catalyst, their defensive end. Williams, who leads Tech in stops. They also get a healthy Kellen Tillman, the strong side backer. Finally, a sixth year senior. He's in the lineup once again. Option attack. You knew you'd see it. Savage has a lane, and he's got a first down with a nice move. Inside the 30, down to the 27. You know, what, what a lift it is, like you described, Joel, to have to have this guy. I mean, Sa he's a smart, tough, shifty runner. He gives them another dimension. And on the year, averaging over five and a half yards a carry, but he hasn't been able to play for, for a little while with that uh, abdominal groin area pull or tear, and it's right in the core. You know, anytime you twist, move, try to do any kind of a violent cut, it'll just uh, grab at you, almost feel like a knife. And Mike Gundy told us he'd practice one day, but then he was sore and stiff the next day, so they couldn't use him. Right, the last couple of weeks he's been practicing, but hasn't been able to go in the game. Looking one way, going the other, Robinson showing pretty good wheels. Almost broke free, gets down inside the 26 to the 25 for gain of three. Now Dave the Keys coming in. Tillman had nice inside out pursuit there, but for Oklahoma State, you cannot turn the ball over there. They've given it up eight times on the season, five times against Troy. They have to improve their tackling. They missed 22 tackles against Georgia, 14 against Troy, and they have to win field position. Ten times this year, they put their defense on the negative side of the field. Defending a field in their own territory, and they, they did it three times against Troy inside their own 30-yard line. You can't put your defense in bad spots. Ball like start. That. 54 the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Now they call it on the new center. 
Andrew Lewis. So there's been multiple changes on the offensive line. Lewis has taken over. David Washington, the regular starter, well, he 27 consecutive starts, is gone with a broken leg. Yeah, and as a result of that, David Washington uh, is, is done, obviously. And, and so now they move, they move Lewis inside. They move Koenig from right guard to left guard, and they put Denny in at the right guard position. So one guy goes down as a domino effect, causes three changes up front. They thought about starting Grant Garner on the outside. Savage, or Kendall Hunter, rather, the freshman who leads them in rushing with 125 yards last game. Hunter brought down trying to get the wide side of the field. No gain on the carry. Let's take a look at Texas Tech's uh, keys. They wanted to start fast and get the crowd a little quiet. They've done it for the fourth straight game. Touchdown on their opening drive. They've only given up one field goal on opening drives to the opposition. Yards after catch, that fuels the offense. Downhill running. Oklahoma State's the first team this defense has played for Texas Tech that lines up in two-back formation a lot of times, runs isos and leads right at you. Will they be able to hold up? Lyle set Setencich is a big concern. Robinson out of the gun on third and ten. Shallow cross. Bowman's got it, and he's got the first down. Boy, uncovered on a simple shallow cross to the 16-yard line. And who was that blocking downfield? None other than Bobby Reed, the former starting quarterback out there on the football field and, and, and throwing a downfield block. Let's take a look at it. Look at Bowman. He's going he's gonna to just break on the shallow cross underneath. And on the edge, look who that is out there. Bobby Reed throwing the block. Trying to get in, in, involved in the in the action a little bit, and I, I like that. I mean, you don't want an athlete like that on the sideline all the time. He's out there as a wide receiver, even though he's trying to improve his game at quarterback. He's a playmaker. Get him some touches. Savage bolts up the middle, breaking a tackle down the ten. We'll push him back, but he got six on the burst, and maybe a little bit more as he's pushed forward. Remember, Texas Tech has not given up a touchdown to the opposition on their first drive all season long. In fact, they've only given up 57 yards on three first drives this year, less than uh, 20 yards per drive. Well, Oklahoma State's blown that up today. And Dave, normally I think time possession is overrated, but Oklahoma State, as we look at their red zone offense, Oklahoma State is second worst in the nation right. in time of possession. They've got to keep the Tech offense off the field. Savage spins short of the first down by a yard. Back to that thought, though, the best defense is keeping the Red Raider offense on the sideline. Yeah, and, and Mike Leach will say, I don't care about time of possession. Well, when you're scoring 50 points a game and you can score so quickly, that's one thing. But when you're struggling a little bit offensively and turning the football over, you don't want to expose your defense. Time of possession for Oklahoma State, 25 minutes and 11 seconds on the season. And that's not good enough. You've got to help your defense more than that. And what this also does when you consume clock like this, it limits Texas Tech's opportunities. In the trip formation over to the left side, can they get the first down with Julius Crossland? Yes. He's inside the six, down to the five. He's your short yardage guy. I like to call these guys vultures, especially yeah. around the goal line. And here's another one that his play, his status for play today was determined in pregame warm-ups as well, Joel. He's had some injuries. They really are beaten up at the running back position. And look at this. The sugar huddle gets to the line of scrimmage. Man, right. just get after it and get Texas Tech on the heels a little bit. Nice little surprise move on the sugar huddle right there by Oklahoma State. And it was almost like an unbalanced line over to the left side. Yeah, they, they kind of power play. They had him outnumbered, Joel. Crossland again. Short yardage guy. Bangs it. Maybe a yard. Inside the five, down to the four, wrapped up by Brian Jones, the sophomore from Everton, Texas. Yeah, there's so many keys to this game. We talked about time possession, third down for Mike Gundy. 25% is all his football team's converting. That has to improve. Red zone, you cannot trade field goal for touchdown against Texas Tech. You have to stay with him. You can't go three for seven. You have to score touchdowns in the red zone. This is the first opportunity for Oklahoma State to match Texas Tech. True freshman out of Totter is the single in a two tight end formation. Water on one side. Brandon Pettigrew, the starter, is on the bottom side of the screen. And on the fade in the corner, Bowman with a shove. It wasn't catchable anyway. Working up against Chris Parker. And Bowman's got a, a big size advantage right there. Bowman, 6'4", 225 pounds. And uh, boy, yeah, he just he just basically jammed his way right, right through Parker. Bowman is... Just a, look, look at all the watch lists that he's on. But this kid has got tremendous strength and balance for a guy his size. And I like him because he's blue collar. He'll block. He'll get after people. Toss sweep. Hunter trying to maintain his footing. And he's in. Wow. Off balance as you can get. And he's still got there and make it down. Draw Savage for the score. I'll tell you what. The guy that made the great block on that was Brandon Pettigrew. 
Man, he sustained his block, and Savage just kind of rode that wave into the end zone. But Savage is making some good, quick cuts, Brad, uh, or uh, Joel. Some very, very quick cuts. And watch, watch Pettigrew right here. Stay with his block, stay with his block. And he ends up pushing Savage into the end zone. Pettigrew gets after it at the next level, and he is the escort, basically, for Savage on that play. Rick's for the point after. Don't forget it's Saturday. It's not you. Sunday. I hear you, Coach. <laughs> I was going to my Bengal play-by-play, -play, man, Brad. <laughs> for the tie. And it's all even. So you talked about Dez Bryant. Savage on balance, still got home. Pettigrew escorted him in. And, and, and Bowman getting after it. Blue collar, he's stretching, stretching, stretching. Finish, finish. That's a linebacker. That's a wide receiver knocking a linebacker off the field to play. That's all the hunt right there. Hoo, hoo. Seven apiece. Welcome back to Stillwater. Bonds will kick it away over to the near side. It's going to be Ed Britton, and he goes out of bounds. He may be out of bounds in the field of play. That was very close. Front foot was out of bounds outside of the goal line. Where was the ball when he caught it? Where was it? Well, we'll take another look later. First, let's head down to Jim Knox. Knoxie. Right. Thank you very much, Joel. And look who I found here. It's Roger Staubach, Hall of Famer Roger Staubach, along with Boone Pickens. Here we go, Boone. There's the camera right there. Good to see both of you. And Roger... You know, this game is being seen around the country. You are in cowboy colors. What brings this about? Well, Boone and I have been friends for a long time. I knew him when he was poor, even. So uh, I have uh, always wanted to come up to a game here. So this is fun and uh, probably lost maybe a few friends. But it's uh, still uh, I'm pulling for I'm pulling for the Cowboys. You won the Heisman Trophy back in 1963 as a junior. What would you do in an offense like Texas Tech? Oh, I'd be fun. To, uh, I mean, uh, Leach does a great job offensively. He's got a good scheme. Their quarterback's good. Harrell's a very good quarterback, so throw the ball 60 times a game. We threw it about 20, but I would have loved this kind of offense. All right, Boone, let me get, ask you a couple of quick questions, and one is, you love this school. You donated over $200 million. What's your vision? Coming up on 300. Coming up on 300. What's your vision for Oklahoma State football? We're going to be competitive in the Big 12. That's all I've said. We're going to be competitive. We'll play by the rules, and uh, we're going to get there. Stadium construction, what's next? Oh, I think the indoor facility will go next. It'll probably go in uh, early 08. Okay. Tell me the truth. Did you have to pay Roger to get you in those colors? No. no. <laughs> no. He's looking good in the colors, though. He is looking good. He's looking good. I right, appreciate the time. Thank you, Boone. Thank you, Roger. Enjoy the game. All right, Noxie. Joel, they called it an illegal block on Crabtree. That uh, moves Texas Tech back half the distance to the goal. It is Shannon Woods on a short one. Now sets up Woods on a screen with blockers. Good call across the 20. Out to the 22. I like what Roger Staubach said. Leeds does a real good job, and I'd love to play in his offense. Yeah, no, no <laughs> doubt about that. Graham Harrell has, has been hit a couple of times already today. Oklahoma State is trying to get after him. They want to pressure him, get him out of rhythm. Sometimes they'll rush three and drop eight. Sometimes they'll rush four, drop seven. Rush five, drop six. And they're going to try to give him different looks in the secondary, try to confuse him a little bit with pre-snap disguises. But this kid processes information very quickly and makes good decisions. Cowboys, number two in the nation in total offense. Individually, Harold number one. Past the 25 to the 26. That's the area of about five for Woods brought down by Cummings. Sorry, Joel, that, that's the area that, that they wanted to see the biggest improvement in on the Oklahoma State side of things, Tim Beckman. They got hammered inside in the running game by Troy last week. And he didn't want Texas Tech with the big splits they take up front to spread his defense out and to be able to hammer it up inside between the tackles. They stood up to it on that snap. And Tech plugging in so many new starters. Only one starter back on the offensive line overall in their first game. Ten of their 22. On both sides of the ball were brand new starters. Quick dump. Shannon Woods, he'll get to the first down. Down the sideline, took a pop past the 35 and goes down near the 37. Got it. Uh, Lacey did a good job. Got it. Made that play. It was Amendola, and there's a flag. And what do they have? Do they have the uh, a little taunting going on? Hopefully, nothing like that. Looks like Woods may have had something to say to a defender. They don't want to do that. Amendola threw a great block for Woods on the perimeter. After the play, personal foul, number two of the offense. In 15 yards, first down. It was more than more than saying something. He had uh, he had a little little going on the sideline here, and, and, and here it is. Take a look. Boom. 
The double uh, double hand shot right there on the Oklahoma State sideline. Field you know, judge side. Yep, you, you have to keep your poise, Joel. I mean, you know, you can't you can't let uh, let anybody get in your head. And that time, Lacey got in his head. And Lacey got a good stick on him. Uh, that's what started it all off. Even though he got the first down, a good yardage. He let Lacey's shot get to him. So it's going to be a first down, a dead ball foul. It'll take it back to the 22. Again, nice pocket protection. Boom. Ball over the middle, and nothing available there that time. Lyle Leon, the young man from Abilene, corralled quickly by Calvin Mickens. So a gain of only a couple up to the 24. Now the first down marker all brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Look better with Overstock.com. It is all about the O. And all about the O today. One team comes in averaging 51 a game. And that's third best in the nation. Fourth best in the nation, in fact. That's the Texas Tech Red Raiders. But don't forget the last seven home games for Oklahoma State. 43 a contest. They're a totally different team at home. They pick it up off the edge. Not the second time, though. And the outside backer gets to him. The rush end, in fact, Nathan Peterson, the senior from Tulsa. Harold never saw it coming. That's great effort, Joel, because Peterson got cut to the turf by Woods, and then he bounced up off the ground. Watch him right here. Woods is going to pick him up and cut him. Watch that up and get after it. That's just relentlessness right there. Because I think Harold saw it peripherally. He went to the ground, but then he didn't realize how quickly he sprung back up. That's just wanting to get after the quarterback and Nathan Peterson. That's an effort sack right there. Only the third sack of the season on quarterback Graham Harrell. Yeah, and the coaches of the Big 12 knew about it last year. He was honorable mention all Big 12. Now a stun up front. Harrell has to get rid of it. Got crap for oh. What a grab! All the way to the 40. Can he beat the man from behind? Inside the 10, pulled down off balance. Incredible grab again by Michael Crabtree. You know what was amazing? He extended himself without leaving his feet. That's the reason that he didn't score as he lost his stride. But watch this effort. He outruns the football. Watch him extend without leaving the grid, leaving his feet. Now, oh, stagger, stagger, lose my stride. And then he gets himself right in. An unbelievable play by Crabtree. This kid is special. I mean, he makes a great adjustment to the football. He's a tremendous route runner. He uses his body well. He's got tremendous body control. He does it all. What a huge play that one is. Pete Mickens, Lacey saved the touchdown. Oh, what a start for Crabtree. He had a touchdown to start the contest, his ninth of the year. That leads the nation. What a now, throw by Harrell under duress. Nice lane, Shannon Wood squirts through. He's in. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Damn. You talk about quick strike, Jerry. You're never safe against the, you know, ask Minnesota. Uh, you know, the Texas Tech's down 31 points in the bowl game with 22 minutes to go and, and win in overtime. They are, there's never a down and distance or field position scenario that Mike Leach doesn't have a response for. And, and Harrell threw an unbelievable ball under duress that Crabtree ran under. That, if, if that play had been tried a hundred times, that might be the only time it's executed as well as it was. Drew Leaker tries to add to his NCAA record, and it's off the upright and in. Boy, that grazed the inside of the upright. <laughs> 189 straight. What a start to this beauty. It's unreal. It's a 14 to 7 lead for Texas Tech and well Michael Crabtree highlight material once again. Service. Trilika with a short one. It's going to be Parrish Cox over to the nearest side. Past the 20 and a short return to only the 23. And before they put it back into play, Dr. Pepper, game break time. Let's head into the studio. Michael Eves, what's the latest? After the play, number 41 on the kicking team. Personal foul. 15-yard penalty, first down. Michael, that's cold. I like the way Michael did it. They did it. Yeah. I, I thought it was already over. I knew it started late, but they got a touchdown. Big news for Notre Dame. How about Notre Dame? 46% of their snaps coming into this game went for no yards or negative yards. Almost half their plays for the season in Texas Tech penalized 15 big ones on that return. Yeah, personal foul. 
So Texas Tech making a mistake. They were they were ready to give them about 25. They're marking it off the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> the officials get backed up. Yeah, it'll take it out to the 37 on a first down in the second series of the game for Oklahoma State. So Greg Burks and his Big 12 crew get it straight mathematically. And Kendall Hunter is going to be in the back there. We've seen him and also Savage as well as Julius Crossley. So they've used three early to pick up the blitz up the middle and dump it off to Hunter in open space. And good yardage on first down. High percentage pass like a run. Goes for five, almost six yards. Brought down by Kellen Tillman. Well, Eric, Eric Crabtree has three catches for 114 yards. This one is amazing. Look at the pressure. And Harrell has to just throw it as far as he can. Crabtree, I've never seen a guy lunge with his upper body, but not his lower body. That is body control. And that's what Crabtree, his biggest asset is his body control. And he exhibited it on that snap big time. Going for the bundle. And a little contact. They're going to say it was thrown out of bounds. Jeremy Broadway was the intended target. I think Zach Robinson thought he had a free play. I think he thought he had Texas Tech in the neutral zone, but there is no flag. Pretty good coverage. Little, they, they click feet. And uh, as a result, ball's overthrown and out of bounds, no play. The button on the cover to the D-back on that side. Broadway, a sophomore from Houston. He's going to bring up a third down. This is the last thing you want to do. You can't afford to go three and out against Texas Tech and let their offense come right back on the field. Exactly, and uh, for the season, converting 25%, one out of every four. You've got to be better than that on third down as Oklahoma State's offense. So out of the gun, the blitz coming, go ahead, go ahead. and it's the go-to guy, Bowman with a buck down the middle. And runs into a congestion, otherwise, he needed one more, and he's on the sideline. He gets into the 33. Boy, did he ever get hit and stride by Robinson. Pretty pro. Well, we saw Bowman on, on the touchdown run blocking a linebacker. Here we see him in a more traditional role for a wide receiver, running the little bit of a, a slant pattern and doing something after the catch. He is strong with yards after catch as well. Hard to get that 6'4", 225-pound body with great balance on the ground. He ran into Tommy Devereaux. Devereaux was trying to give him a block. He gets there first and gets the block. Texas Tech, Texas Tech is going to take a timeout. I think he's got the boundary, the sideline for a score. Good job by Zach Robinson getting rid of the football because there was a blitzer that was unblocked. And Robinson picked him up himself basically by throwing the football getting it out of his hand before the unblocked blitzer could get to his face so the heat now on texas tech to get a stop Oklahoma State just converted on third and four a big inversion for a darius moment all conference performer last year as we head back downstairs to jim knox Knoxie. all right thank you joe you know you talked about the temperature here 92 okay but right now stan's going to take it with his digital turf temperature gauge and what do we read here 125 degrees 125 guys definitely heat will be a factor throughout this ball game thanks stan yeah that's it that's right at your feet and it, and it cools off quickly but i mean i remember playing on, in conditions like this i remember playing the, the one time when the, the, the artificial turf was so hot when you put your hand in the stands you would peel skin it would actually blister your, your fingers up a little bit it's not that quite quite that hot today but i'll tell you it's tough to deal with down there oklahoma state as you see by the graphic a different team at home kendall hunter trying to make a miss runs through a tackle he's got about 10. that's the freshman that went for 125 on a tighter on 16 carries last week he's their leading rushers he's brought down by marcus Bunt. Now the first down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% on brand name products. Live better with Overstock.com. It is all about the O. Appropriate between these two teams today. It'll be a second and less than a yard. Hunter spins. I think he's got enough. He does. With a flag down in the secondary. As it was way downfield inside the five. And I don't know why they throw this flag. It's a running play. It's Jeremy Broadway down there. I mean, it, with the, no, they weren't throwing the football. And that's what he's explaining yeah. to the referee right now. In contact. Got tangled up with Bunt. Flicky, number nine in the offense. That's not good. 15 yard penalty, second down. That far away from the play. Broadway with an illegal block in the back. Let's take a look at Broadway down the field. What did he do? Well, the defender turned around and Broadway, you know what? Come on. Honestly, Come on. when a defender turns around like that, it's his problem. I mean, Right. It, you, you, he started to throw on the block before the defender spun. You're throwing as the body is presented to you. 
that that flag, in my opinion, should not have been called. The, the, the defensive back was spinning like a top, thinking that it was a pass. Broadway really didn't have to pull the trigger when he did either, though. It was an unfortunate deal. Had no effect on the play whatsoever. Robinson out of the gun. He's 5 of 7, 75 yards delay. Hunter weaves his way up the middle. Good yardage. Takes a pop and goes down at about the 27. He's short of the first down by five. Joe Garcia, a strong safety with the shot. I agree with you, though. That is a bad break for Oklahoma State. That far away, and if he turns his back on the play. Yeah, he, he spun. He turns his back on him. When you start to make a block, if a defensive back turns his back on you, you you're not supposed to be called for an illegal block. I mean, you threw at his body legally as the play was presented to you. Well, Oklahoma State playing a lot younger in their offensive backfield, as they told us earlier this week, than they ever anticipated. Here's the sophomore Robinson. Bowman's got it. He's close to a first down, right on the marker. And I bring that up, Dave, because we just saw the running back, Kendall Hunter, the true freshman from Tyler. He's their leading ground gainer over the first three games of the year. They thought they were going to redshirt him. Well, when you look at it, Joel, you have Lewis, the sophomore center. You have a sophomore quarterback in Robinson. And, and, and then when Hunter's in there, it's a freshman, a true freshman tailback. That is awfully young right up the middle. I mean, you, to have a sophomore center and a sophomore quarterback, that's very, very difficult. And when they lost David Washington at the center position, they lost their quarterback to the offensive line. Lewis doing a pretty good job so far today, though. Roslin joining Savage in the backfield. Here's the center, Usurpe. And on the carry, it's the pull of the back. Roslin takes it for Ratliff, and Ratliff on that side of the field and make it savage 22 not 32 on the far side of the field gain of about three will that be the final snap get one more off no we'll head over to the sideline and look forward to second and seven on a very productive first 15 minutes of play for both teams offensively now he's going to be able to get stops that's going to be the key it's a shoot out Joel so at the end of the first quarter conference opener for both Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. Cowboys trying to tie it up when we come back deep in Red Raider territory. It's a 14 to 7 lead for Tech. And we'll come back to Stillwater after this word from Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Zone. Bowman's there, and it's out of his hands. It's interference, though. The official threw the flag and then made the call incomplete. And I think they're going to get Texas Tech for interfering with Bowman back there. Joe Garcia on the coverage. Hard to pick up the flag, but it is in the end zone, that yellow flag in that orange end zone. Bowman is such a target. Pass interference. Number 29 in the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, it's actually 49. He didn't look at the football, Dave. Well, that's it. You gotta you gotta find the ball, and then you gotta make a play on the football. Cushion, plenty of cushion. Bowman just runs around. It's his own defense, and, and you can't you can't play the, def uh, the the defender without finding the football at all. And Garcia did exactly that. Savage stays in the backfield. Throw and now the fade. Des Bryant. He caught a touchdown, Oklahoma State. Flag on the play. Now let's see. I saw Des Bryant with a little bit of a hand action there. They're going to call offensive pass interference or defensive. Let's see if this stands because Bryant, it is, looks like it's going to be on Texas Tech. Pass interference. And one of the defense. A penalty declined. Touchdown. There was a little hand-to-hand -hand combat going on. And Des Bryant uh, is, a, is a big bodied receiver himself. And then this is a contested catch deal. Get it airborne and see what can be done. And catch and get the left foot down. That's beautiful body control right there as well. Number one working against number one. Des Bryant makes the play on the football. He did, he did a little bit of a little bit of a push with the hand to make a play on it, but no call on Des Bryant. Went the other way. Yeah, it looked good. It looked like he got the left foot down. Yeah. It is under review. Come back for the clarification with referee Greg Burks when we return to Stillwater. At ChristianMingle.com, you can...
Here's a little hand-to-hand -hand combat going on. I, I think it's a no call either way. The official threw the flag. Both guys were chicken fighting a little bit with the hands. Tremendous effort to catch it and get the and get the left foot down. Inbounds by a few inches. Excellent play by Des Bryant. Boy, we've seen some receivers with body control today. Extraordinary. Well, Michael Crabtree, a redshirt freshman, with a touchdown grab early in the game for Tech as Ricks puts it through. It's all even, and now we see a true freshman from Lufkin, Des Bryant at 6'2", 210. Listed as the seventh best wide receiver in the nation last year by one of the scouting services. So here's a guy who had choices. I, he was offered free rides, LSU, Oklahoma, Nebraska, A&M. There were plenty of other schools that wanted him, and he came here to Oklahoma State. Well, let's take a look at what he looked like in high school. Played his high school football at Lufkin. And this kid had has all the attributes you're looking for from a wide receiver. Here, look, give him the football, get in his hands as many ways as you can. He's thinking about an end-around pass. No, let me tuck it and go. Look at the moves in space that make you miss on people. So he's got the athletic ability there. Now the contested catch. Get airborne, make a play, get the foot down. Nice job there. And then watch the yards after catch here. Splitting a couple of defenders, getting the shoulder pad squared up, finishing the play for a touchdown. That's a, a nice package right there that Oklahoma State has to go in combination with Bowman. Bowman and Bryant, the killer bees. Bowman and Bryant, you can't double them both. How about the shoes? I like the yellow, like spats on there. Yeah. Dude, instead of Billy White shoes, he was Des Gold shoes. Des Yellow shoes. That Fodge is going to kick it away. They're punting. They'll handle the kickoff duties. Over to the near side, Crabtree, far side. It's going to be L.A. Reed. And on the run from the 15, Crabtree stumbles his way across the 25. Out to the 28. Well, on the premiere episode of Sports Science, who are the highest flyers in sports? Is it hang time a myth or reality? From elite NFL receivers to NBA Skywalkers, the science of human flight is put under the microscope. Sports Science premieres with human flight September 30th only, right here on FSN. You know, Joe, we talk about what a different team Oklahoma State is at home. Under the era of Les Miles and Mike Gundy, they are 26 and 13 at home, 11 and 21 on the road. They've won two for every loss at home and lost two for every win on the road. Amazing differential. And huge numbers for Tech on first down, 8.3. They'll give it to the end around. Ed Britton, big yard. It breaks the tackle and out of bounds, just barely knocked out of bounds. Ed Britton out of El Paso. The sophomore showed some speed on the outside. You know, I don't think Mike, Mike Leach gets enough credit for everything that he's done as a play caller and as a football coach. He knows when to make calls like this at just the opportune time. Tremendous block on the edge by Woods gets it going. Shannon Woods is reliable. He's, he's, he's handled the football over 200 times in his career, never fumbled it. And that guy is a brilliant play caller, Mike Leach. 13 yards on first down, so their first downs are killing. Oklahoma State and just wide low and away he tried to find Danny Amendola one of the few misses only the third miscue so far before that he had been eight of ten Graham Harrell so it'll be second and ten first half marker all brought to you by overstock.com with the convenience of shopping at home you can save up to 70 percent on amazing deals from overstock.com it was all about the old it's been rare when they've had second and long <laughs> oh, God. Opening minute of the second quarter, 28 points combined. Harrell looking for the little flow of the screen underneath. Nice moves. Pass the 48 to the 49. Good yardage. Coming in. That's Crabtree again. Coming into today's game, third down has been phenomenal for Texas Tech. They're converting over 56% of the time. They haven't had very many third and, and longs this, this uh, season. And last year they were awful. They yeah. like the last couple of years, 72nd and 73rd in the nation. They're a lot more efficient on third down this season, and Coach Lee says they don't talk about it. It's like a no-hitter. They don't talk about it. They just execute. Now can they get it out of the backfield? Shannon Woods won't get there. He lost the football. Did the whistle blow? They're going to say the play was stopped. Yeah, forward progress looked like it was stopped. So it'll be fourth down. I think and he that's it. We're going to see. Well, Mike Leach. We've yeah, seen him. Nice. We've seen him at least at home. I remember a couple of years ago we were down in Lubbock. He was back in Zone 27 on one of the first series of the game, and he went for it. I remember him on the road in Kansas going for it in very, very uh, difficult field position. 
His forward progress has stopped as he's reaching the ball out. He's definitely stopped. He's reaching out and swatted away. The official stopped the play and spotted the ball back where his the ball was before he extended it. Yeah, it's a shock. It is going to be a punt. That's a shock anyway because they've only had six punts over the first three games from Jonathan LaCour, this, true freshman out of Kingwood. This is the first punt of the game. You and I could have punted today in the first quarter if nobody had to. Yeah. And we could have gotten our letter today. Parrish Cox, second of the Big 12 in punt returns. Waiting. It's going to be a delayed game. They don't mind, though. With the ball almost in the midfield stripe anyway. And, and, you know, his, his punting has not been as good as the numbers indicate. He's had some go off the side of his foot, hit the, hit the turf, and bounce very favorably. And as you described, Joel, he's only punted the ball six times on the season. So this isn't a gimme right here, but LaCour could help his football team by pinning Oklahoma State back. So it took us 17 minutes into the game to get our first punt. That kind of day. Nice. Yeah, that's a beauty. Good hang time. Turned it over. And smart play by Cox. Good decoy. Let it hit at the six. When we come back, Oklahoma State's going to have it for the third time. They'll have it back at their own 20 and look for their first lead of the day. Online price guarantee and savings of up to 70%. Shop at Overstock.com. It is all about the O. Good one going right now in Stillwater. Well, these guys need a break. <laughs> it is hot on the field. Yes, Better than 100 degrees down in the Astro, the, the artificial surface. They tied at 14. Little delay action. Savage. Nifty moves out to the 30. And a spin across the 35. Time now for a Dr. Pepper game break. Head back to the studio. Michael Eves. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not forgetting about the Buckeyes being from Ohio. I like the way you put if they go on to win. But you can never discount Jim Trussell. And what different offense Oklahoma State is with their running back Savage. Look at Savage. Wheel and deal here. Breaking tackles, making a miss. He's got another first down. All the way to the 49. They're a different team. No, no doubt. I mean, it's a different offense with, with him in the football game. In their bowl game against Alabama, he had 112 yards. And, and this is what this young man's capable of. Look at the change of direction. Look at the change of speed. And, 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 and the balance. And he is he is a special running back. Keeps those shoulder pads. You notice he never turned his pads to the sideline, east and west. He always kept his shoulder pads squared up to get up 49. the football field after he made this cut with some authority. Hunter takes over in the backfield on a play fake going for the bundle for Bowman and fell down. He just ran up the back of the defensive back and clicked his heels a little bit on that play. Yeah, he ran up yeah, walls back. Wall, yes. How about eight carries, 60 yards already for Dontrell Savage. Let's take a look at the uh, Keystone Light smooth move of the, of the game right here. Savage, man, he is he is Mr. Smooth. And, and, and talk about balance and change of direction and vision and all that good stuff. He showed his <laughs> right there. He's, he, he he's missed, the he missed the last two games, Dave, yeah. as we mentioned with a groin injury. And now movement up front. I'll tell you something after watching him on that last one. I think I suffered a groin injury. <laughs> Richard Jones jumped. Right now. That caused the offensive line to jump by Oklahoma State. You know, a big key in this game, Joel, Oklahoma State five for five on third down. They were converting 25% coming in. Offsides, 99 defense, five yard penalty, second down. Jones was the one that initiated the domino effect, having Oklahoma State move. Watch the big fella. Once he gets going, can't stop that big body. And now Oklahoma State moves. A reaction to the big boy, so that goes on the defense. It'll be second and five. Again, it's Hunter. Boy, patience by the young man. He may go the distance. They won't get him. Inside the 10, touchdown Oklahoma State. Holy mackerel. We have ourselves a shootout. One doing it by ground on that drive. The other team doing it in the air. And you know, 
sometimes somebody comes back like Savage does, and he lists the whole team. And he lists, lists the performances of everybody. And Hunter sees Savage run the ball, and Hunter says, I'm, I'm, he's motivating me. And Hunter looks like a mini Savage. Look at the blocking line. Everybody's going to have, there's a miss right there in, in space. And, and another miss, two missed tackles on that play due to Hunter's excellence. Everybody else, though, Oklahoma State had a hat on. Hunter, woo, big time in space. Rick's in for the point after. Hunter now has 69 yards after that 46 yard touchdown run. So they've got two backs already with 60 plus yards apiece. Kendall Hunter into the end zone and the Cowboys with their first lead of the day. Five. Over to the far side, it's going to be L.A. Reed from the four. Got a lane. Elliot Reed across the 30, barely tripped up, lost the football. Who fell on it? And it is Texas Tech football. Ball ended up going out of bounds. Texas Tech, the last team with possession. And they ret retained said possession. And, well, there's the ball. Knocked out, punched from behind. Like a pretty good effort right there by Smith in coverage. Get coverage, and everybody's a free for all of the sidelines. Rolls out of bounds. Last possession, really punch the ball in, uh, whoop, rip it in there, punch, rip the ball out, with the right hand, really good effort right there by Carter. So Texas Tech, back at their own 31, trailing for the first time today. There's Smith, there are 248, Smith, the defensive player. Shannon Woods, not much. Maybe a couple. Downstairs we go to Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, Joe, I'll tell you what, Dave Lappin's going to love this. Kendall, uh, after he, after scoring the touchdown, he comes up right here. Hunter comes up, and what does he congratulate first? His offensive line. Yeah, the guys, Knoxie. Yeah, you're going to love that, Big Dave. Right now, the offensive line taking a breather. As you notice, on their head, the cool hats. Air condition blowing through there right now. That's a good look. I like it. It's a real good look, those shower caps. <laughs> I like it. I like the boys. Second and eight. you got to keep a cool head. You always have have to keep a cool head. You got to be level headed, cool headed, poised. Move back in there, Kobe Lewis on the play fake. Available is Amendola, the senior wide receiver. 26 catches coming in today. 34 his career best last season. We had a chance to talk to him in San Antonio. What a great young man he is. Just a level headed you know, kid, a dad, a high school coach out of the woodlands in Houston. But, uh, Kind of a Wes Welker type that yeah. could help you in all kinds of areas. Quality person, tremendous competitor. Everybody in the football team looks up to Danny Amendola because he will fight you to the very end. Harold with time again. Available. Another first down. First catch of the day for Grant Walker with a big touchdown catch last week. In fact, a 38 yarder last week brought down by Lacey. Well, you, you know, when, when the opposition takes a seven-point lead, Mike Leach yawns and says, oh, um, that's nothing. I mean, there is no panic whatsoever on the Texas Tech sideline. Uh, Mike Leach knows he's in a, a scoring fest, but he doesn't mind that at all. He's been, he's been in these type of situations many, many times. Tech is never out of the football game, as proven in the bowl game against Minnesota. Well, the Brant's in there at the slide position. Go the other way. So trips low, goes high to Amendola again for a gain of about nine on first down, brought down by Mickens. You know, when you watch Texas Tech, the routes are so crisp. Watch Amendola run the slant. And, and that's that's just a beautifully done, gets, gets inside of the zone, presents himself as his available target. They run so many snaps in practice. I mean, the quarterbacks and the wide receivers get in such a great rhythm because of the tempo and the number of snaps. Repetition breeds comfort level. The only thing they're not doing is against other people, other opponents, and they are timing it up. It'll be second in the yard. Shannon Woods more than enough for the first down, lunging his way inside the 25 to the 24. So they started back at their own 31, and once again, it does not take Tech long to get deep in their opponent's territory. No, it, it is, it's just incredible. Mike Leach, uh, I, I really don't think that he has gotten enough credit around the country what he's done at Texas Tech. I mean, you know, under Spike Dykes, they ran the football play. They were a totally different uh, football team 
And Mike Leach has resurrected this program by bringing in the high-powered spread offense. Third one in his coach in Tech history. Here's the heat on Harrell. Isolation of the wideout and knocked away at the last second from Crabtree. What a play by the D-back on that side of the field. And they lost Van Zandt. He went into the locker room before this series. On the coverage number six, Ricky Bryant. That was, that was a pretty good effort uh, by Ricky Price. And as you see to the back corner of the end zone, Ricky Price using the field uh, using the field to his advantage. And uh, I'm sorry, it's not uh, it's not Ricky Price. It is is Mickens. And he uses the boundary to his advantage as the 12th defender. Nice effort. Second and ten underneath Amendola again, who's been featured on this series. He's got a gain of nine. Brought down by Ricky Price. You know what happens, Joe, is Crabtree starts getting a lot of attention, and you know all, you can't double team everybody. So Mike Leach knows that. His quarterback Graham Harrell knows that. So Graham Harrell is going to say, "Okay, well, it's going to start rolling toward Crabtree. I'm going elsewhere." And Amendola or whoever else is going to step up and make plays. You have to win. Whoever's in the one-on-one -on -one situation, he has to win his battle. He's got LA reading that battle down on the lower side of your screen. Trips up top. Needs two. And throws it high. He wanted to go with the quick one. A hot read to Eric Morris. He wasn't ready. Lacey on the coverage. It almost looked like it surprised the wide receiver. I agree. He got to get up on top of him pretty darn quickly, didn't he? Well, fourth and two. They haven't gone for many field goals this year. It's at the 17. Fourth and two. And they're going to keep the offense on the field. They're not going to go for it. And Trulika has made six for he's made six straight inside of 40 yards, so he's capable from this distance. Woods is the single. Harold James is the play at the line. The work out of the gun. Woods in the flat. No, it's taken away. Now Harold trying to add lib. Will he run for it? He can. He instead dumps it off Amendola. So Amendola with four catches on this possession, this series already. Brought down by Sexton, and it's a first and goal to the nine. Okay, here's a quarterback that is not going to beat you with jackhammer feet, but has pocket awareness and presence. Slide step, buy a little time, get out of pocket, change the launch point. The whole time, Oklahoma State secondary is under stress, and you can't cover forever. And, you know, in the old scramble drill, everybody has a role. And Amendola's the one that finds himself available, working his way back to the quarterback. That's a patient, poised quarterback that has a lot of experience. Trying to tie it up at 21. On a little slant, complete to Edward Britton, down to the two. It'll be second and goal from there. To the sideline, Jim Knox. All right, y'all, I tell you what, Texas Tech doing a lot of their damage without Oklahoma State's top quarterback in the game. Martel Van Zant in the locker room, re-aggravated a foot injury. They're going to check him out. We'll see if he comes back, guys. Ooh, boy, I'll tell you, foot, foot injuries aren't good for anybody. And, you know, you're hoping it's not really kind of like a stress fracture or anything like that. But when your foundation's not solid, it's tough to perform, no doubt. Woods joined in the backfield by Kobe Lewis. The wide receiver set on second and goal. Fade, you know, a bullet into the end zone. Touchdown, Michael Crabtree, his second of the game. Well, that was beautifully designed right there, and the execution was even better because what, what they did, they had Mickens in coverage on Crabtree. The ball was thrown to Crabtree's back hip intentionally. And he ran a little pivot route away from Mickens to get separation. Perfectly timed football. Crabtree made Mickens think he was going to run a route more toward the middle or back of the end zone. And the ball was thrown to the back hip, and he just sprung out there and made a great catch. And that's the man who's in there right now. Martel Van Zandt, who's back in the locker room. Drilika, the extra point. We are all even once again. That's a player right there. The Crabtree. sensational story continues for redshirt freshman Michael Crabtree out of Carter High School in Dallas. He's got two of the three touchdowns for the Red Raiders today. We are even at 21. Back after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. It didn't look like a sophomore that time. Zach Robinson has plenty of arm strength. There's no doubt about it. He does have 
great feet. Tremendous athlete, played wide receiver in high school for part of his career, and they had a package for him when Bobby Reed was the quarterback where he was a slot receiver and did a lot of things for him. Patrell Savage, the single, eight carries, 60 yards, run the option, Savage out of the edge, couple of blocks, good yardage. And then he takes a shot from Jamar Wall. They were worried about the inside run game. Texas Tech said they have faced SMU, UTEP, and last week Rice. Three basic spread formations. Right. They didn't have a real power game against them, and they were worried about the ground game of Oklahoma State. That time they went outside with the option, but they have reason for concern. Well, in Hunter, Hunter's run went right up the middle. That's where Hunter hurt them. He creased them right between the tackles for his long touchdown run. It's a gain of seven on first down. Try to set up the screen is Teddy going to go deep. Daz Bryant, he couldn't locate it either. Almost like he lost it in the sun looking back, working against Wall. Well, and it's going to be third and short. That was all mistimed. And, and, and you have you have a deal right there where, where Stenner Burns is saying, I had Texas Tech in the neutral zone. I snapped the ball be early because I had them in the neutral zone. And the play was all out of sorts timing-wise as a result of that. Uh, no flag, no harm, no foul there. Now Oklahoma State faces a third down. They are five for five at this stage on third down. Big one right here. Dead last in the Big 12 coming in over their first three games this year with a one and two record. Coming off a huge disappointment. They'll got a timeout, and that's the loss at Troy last week where they gave up a ton of yardage and better than 40 points. Last week they were two for 11 on third down against Troy. Today they're five for five. So they look at third and three. A little more than three yards needed. So Graham Harrell has already hooked up a couple of times with freshman sensation Michael Crabtree. We caught up with Graham Harrell, talked about his relationship with Crabtree. I think we have a really good relationship. Uh, he's a great player. Um, he, he's unbelievably talented, and uh, ever since he's been on campus, we've gotten along really well. I know he's gonna be special from uh, you know the first time I. First time I threw him the ball, I knew he was different. He's different. And, uh, these guys are going to make beautiful music together for a while. And Crabtree has shown all of his abilities early, already in this football game. And those are his eight touchdowns coming into this football game, but he's already, he's already got a couple more today. So now he's got ten touchdowns in big, three and a half games. Big third down. And they convert. It's a first down. Jeremy Broadway on the receiving and the sophomore from Houston just settled in underneath. And he's got to pass the 45. And I say big because that way you keep Harold off the field. Absolutely. Your best defense against Texas Tech is moving the ball in third down and time consuming drives and limiting their opportunities and limiting exposure of your defense. Oklahoma State six for six on third down. What a start, Dave. Inside of seven minutes to play, it is tied at 21. A couple of trips in, a couple of trips ago into Stillwater. It was 51 49. Oklahoma State won. They run the option again to Savage. And Savage on the kickout block gets about five more down to the 44 before he's brought down by Chris Parker. Well, Oklahoma State in their first three games had run the option an average of three to five times a game, just to keep you honest, to keep you out of a out of a blitz mentality. They've already run it three times here in a quarter and a half. So they see something on the perimeter against Texas Tech when they stretch them horizontally that they can take advantage of. It'll be second and five, ball to the 49. Texas Tech. Robinson almost exclusively out of the shotgun today. Disparity in rushing yards, 147 bouncing around as Savage with a stiff arm. That time they caught up with him. He couldn't get away from Darcel McBath, the free safety. Junior out of Gainesville, Texas, who was second team all Big 12 last year. Well, the, the one staple that Oklahoma State has been able to hang their hat on the last couple weeks is running the football. They've averaged 230 yards a game on the ground. They ran it well down at Troy. But they just turned it over too many times. They had five turnovers. And Mike Gundy's got a young quarterback in there. It's his second start. His best friend is a solid running game. And the reason they're performing so well in Robinson's 9 of 13 for over 100 yards is they have a ground game. When you can run it and make Texas Tech have to defend the run, you can play action pass and take advantage of situations. Well, it started early and often. And for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, well, they responded. Savage, when they were down early, even though he was off balance. Well, they, they, and Dez Bryant. Doing a good job of mixing things up, Joel. So trying to stay balanced with that with that attack. And now 
here, here's uh, Savage again, taking, taking advantage, or Hunter going on his long touchdown run up the gut. So, so they've, shown, they've shown Savage on the ground, they've shown Hunter on the ground, and I mean, that, you know, they've, they've, they've run the option to stretch them horizontally, they've pounded it inside, they've thrown it over their heads, they've attacked all quadrants of the football field as the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Mike Gundy was very excited about his game plan going in. I can see why now. Well, last year, Oklahoma State, one of the few teams to have that kind of balance, 200 yards passing and rushing. Now, Bobby Reed, middle of three receivers. Gadget play, no. Robinson running for the first down, showing good wheels. 61 yards on the ground last week, and that's one of the advantages. They didn't feel there was a huge drop-off because he was such a good runner even in high school. Absolutely. He, he, he has pretty darn good speed, and you, you have a situation where you quarterback. This is a designed quarterback run play, and he does a nice job. The offensive line just, just handles people up front. You get a blocker to the next level, and uh, Robinson just converts 7-for-7 seven seven on third down now. The drive that started back at the Oklahoma State 20. Alive and well at the 38 of Texas Tech. Kendall Hunter has taken over in the backfield. He'll get it on first down. Nice little lane up the middle. And more up there. Garcia, the safety, doesn't hang on. Uh -oh. It's a flag uh -oh. at Wolfen. the end of the play. Some whooping going on downfield. Maybe a personal foul. Des Bryant was down there. And Bowman, maybe a personal foul working against Oklahoma State. Came there's, late. There's two flags. Did they see the same thing? I think they did. I think it was that flagrant. Two officials through laundry. After the play, personal foul, number 12, Oklahoma State. 15-yard penalty, second down. When he says after the play, that hurts even more. Yeah. Because a dead ball foul, you lose the down, too. And, and Bowman is a, is a guy that's an experienced player that has to keep his poise. You can't, uh, you, you can't hurt your team by those post-play penalties like that. Pre-snap penalties, post-play penalties, drive coaches crazy. Mike Gundy just aged a couple of months on that one. I mean, you just can't, you can't do that. You, you have to be, you can't be selfish. You can't do something for self-gratification and hurt your team. You can't do it. And with the ball back on the 49. And it's going to be second and better than 20. And right about 21 yards. Playing it safe on the short side of the field, Hunter. Belted out of bounds at about the 47, 46 yard line. Short game. So they're already in field goal territory. Inside of five minutes with the clock rolling. Well, this is a third down that's going to be tough to convert, obviously. It's it's third and what, 20? And you can't put yourself in these situations. And, and the personal foul on Bowman put them in a very, very difficult situation. He put his team in jeopardy. And that's what you can't, you just can't do it. There's, there's no reason for it. There's not any kind of an explanation whatsoever to say it was okay. Now can you get enough for a long field goal try? Savage, the single that's flanking Robinson to the left. And Robinson, a lot of field to run. Now can he make a miss? Yes, he does. He's got a first down and it goes the distance. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. <laughs> We talked about his legs and his ability to improvise at the beginning of the broadcast. That sometimes when he uses his legs, when a play breaks down, it turns out to be a better call than the call that was made. And, and this is a quarterback who's saying, you know what, there's nowhere to go. I I'm going to tuck it, and I'm going to make something happen. And look at him in space. Look at the downfield blocks. Whenever you have a play like this, you have wide receivers down the football field doing the blue collar stuff blocking people so the quarterback can take advantage. Yeah. Excellent. Get, guess who gave him a block downfield? Bowman. Uh, Darius Bowman. He had to make up for it. He had a great block downfield. <laughs> Jason Ricks for the point after, and it's a seven-point lead again. Whoever has it last, they're going to win this baby. Oh, man. It's a seven-point lead for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Quarterback Zach Robinson freelancing. Yeah, w watch what he sees. A line stunt, and there's a lane here because they lose contain. So he recognizes that, and it's picked up. Look at the look at the cavity, and he says, "I'm going to take it right there." The line stunt gave me a huge running lane. I think I can get a first down. Oh, I can get more. All of a sudden, his receivers receivers start working for him. Watch Bowman. There's a block right here, and what the move he makes. Watch Bowman. Oh, he's getting two. 
Bowman, Bowman knocks two down. So he says, I'm going to make up for my penalty by knocking two bodies down so Robinson can score. Nice job, Bowman, on the blue collar stuff. 424 to play in the half. Lewis and Woods in the backfield. And nothing doing that time for Kobe Lewis. They shut him down for a loss of yard, and that's a rarity in Tex offense. Brought down by Cummings, the underneath tackle. I mean, this look, look at the look at the yards. This is this is almost a game already. This would be a good game for most people. 28 points and 21 points in those kind of yards. And, and we've got a, a lot of time to go. In the, we, the first about half. Four minutes to go in the first half in the second quarter yeah. of this football game. That's potentially two more scores. It is unbelievable to watch these teams execute offensively. Well, this is like State was the last couple of years when they're putting up wild numbers. Not their first three games when they're putting the ball on the ground. Harrell out of the pocket. Come back route for Crabtree. Helped on his quarterback right at the first down marker. And the one thing Mike Gundy told us earlier this week, he said, all the problems are correctable. Right. So nobody's in panic mode because right now they're their own worst enemy. They turned it over five times last week and twice one of the running backs to start two of the three games Toaster. put it on the ground yeah. without any contact on their first snap offensively. And, and oh, Mike Gundy said, look, you know, we have self-destructed. What they've done is they've taken Oklahoma State off their schedule today. You can't help Texas Tech by putting yourself on your schedule and self-destructing with turnovers, penalties, mental mistakes. They're playing a clean game, and they're good enough to compete with Texas Tech, but not if they have themselves on their schedule, and they've removed themselves. It's third and inches. It's just short. At the first down where they put it down. Lewis and Woods once again. It'll be Shannon Woods. Can he turn the corner? Breaks the tackle. Got the first down. Nice move by Shannon Woods. Checking downstairs. Noxie. All right, thank you, Joe. Coming up on the Atachi Halftime Show. Hey, up, guys. Tell you what, that show's going to give you a big lift. Join Michael Eves and DeMarco Barr. They're going to take you through the South Carolina LSU game. That should be a good one. Also, the Big 12 scoreboard and plenty of highlights. You guys ready for halftime? They're ready for Michael DeMarco. They're also ready for you, Joel and Dave. I'll, I'll tell you, Noxie, that, that's a good indicator how close these fans are to the field. The fans are right on top of you, and this place can get really loud because of the the setup of, of being so close proximity-wise to the football field. There is no sideline here. <laughs> no, no room at all. Woods on the delay uh -oh. makes a miss. He's got a first down all the way to the 45. One of the Red Raiders said a couple of years ago when they played here, he felt one of the fans pat him on the back when he's over on the side. <laughs> exactly. And Woods runs behind the big right side. This right side of the offensive line of Texas Tech. Both players are 6'7", and they both weigh in the 370-pound range. And he said, I think I'll run over there. I'm going to run behind that big right guard and that big right tackle over there working for me. And, and uh, Carter and Johnson are massive human beings, and Shannon Woods averaging over five yards a pop. On first down, Amendola's available, and Danny Amendola with another catch. He's down to the 23, and for Amendola, that is his sixth grab of the game. And, and watch Amendola realize, recognize the, the, the coverage, and settle into the zone. When they read zone, they settle. When they read man, they continue to run. And, and that's a simple deal. The quarterback receiver have to be on the same page. And every route that's run, there's a sight adjuster or a hot read reaction off of every run. Quarterback and receiver have to be on the same page reading coverages as they break from the line of scrimmage. Graham Harrell is now 18 of 23 for 269, going for Ed Britton, and it'll be an offensive yeah. interference call. The yeah. D-back Parrish Cox had the angle, had the inside position, and Britton, he had to play defensive back on it. He did. They reversed roles, Joe, and I think that was a good move by Britton because that was picked. I mean, I think Britton had to do everything that he did do to make sure that it wasn't a turnover. Pass interference. Number 27 of the offense. First down. Uh, there, was, there was no advantage for Britton in this play. The coverage was just outstanding, and the, and the defender is entitled to the same spot on the football field, and, and Britton just decides to, to move Parrish Cox. And Cox turned into the receiver, Britton turned into the defensive back, as you described, Joel, and the interference occurred. And now it's going to be first in 25 with the ball back at the 37. Now, both Oklahoma State. Three on the wide side of the field for Harold to choose from. Amendola is the single on the high side, on the short side of the field. And they've gone to that side. He's working. 
against Mickens, who's in there for Van Zandt. Looks one way, goes back to Amendola again. You could see it coming, couldn't you? Wow, what a move by Danny Amendola. He's out of bounds with a flag on the play where they may have gone for the grill. Did they grab his face mask on the way by? Wow, it's, it's face mask. They're debating, is it 5 or 15? But the missed tackle was critical on this football play. Well, but they're spotting where Van Zant left. Now they're going after his replacement, Mickens. And, and I think, yeah, and, and Lacey's been, been out there some, too, and, and they can't find anybody to, to be able to hold face it. Face mask, number 27 of the defense. Five-yard penalty, first down. And Mickens is going get, uh, to get called for the, for the face mask, but Amendola makes the catch. And not only the catch, it's yards after catch. And he makes Mickens miss. And as Mickens is missing, he grabs Grill as he's sliding by. But that's just a tremendous move. Mickens sailing out into space. You got to break down, stay over your feet. From the 12, first and 10, Harold on a double move. Touchdown, Texas Tech, Eric Morris. <laughs> it's incredible. Incredible the touch Harold has. He is a, he's got tremendous football IQ, and, and he is a, he's got his doctorate in football geometry because this guy understands passing angles as well as any quarterback I've seen. Little pump fake, Joel, double move, boom. Just right on the money. That is just an outstanding performance. Lacey beaten that time. Great play by receiver and quarterback on the same page, reading the same stuff. It's monotonous for Trey Lincoln, doesn't it? <laughs> no field goal tries, just extra points, and he ties it. Dave, this is way too much fun. Uh, this is, this is going to be a great one. <laughs> it is tied at 28. Texas Tech evens it up with a 76-yard march. What an answer. He's going to bring it out. Looks like a decent decision. But he's got it across the 25-26. Thought it might have been a home run ball. Yeah, uh, Graham Harrell has a chance to really shatter yeah. the all-time record set by Cliff Kingsbury. Another guy who started for three years like Harrell will when he's a senior next year. Well, he's got 158 now. I'm sure he'll end up with probably 110, 115 and shatter that by probably 20 touchdowns. And he may have, he's got three already, we're not even at the half. I mean, he had six last week against Rice. I mean, he's just, he's something, something else. He's special. Cowboys have two timeouts left in the bar of their 26. Set up the screen, and it's too tall for Savage. For Savage, only at 5'9", and it's a generous 5'9". He was not going to be able to get to that one. I mean, I'm looking at looking at some of the numbers. Amendola has seven catches for 113 yards. Crabtree has six for 134 and two touchdowns. Then on the other side, Oklahoma State, Hunter's rushed for 74, Savage for 72, Robinson for 62, and they've all rushed for a touchdown. One's done it on the ground, one's done it in the air. Well, I don't know if I'd stop hey, running the football, even though there's not that much time left. The way that they have succeeded on the ground. And getting outside, it'll be Savage to the 31. Let's see where they spot it, close to the 32. So they've got another third down and about four this time. This is like the Paul Revere game of, of the 21st century. Instead of one by land, two by sea, it's one by land, two by air. I mean, it's like, it's crazy. You know, before that snap, that was good for about six, they had combined. Now they're up to 670 yards of total yeah. offense between the two. Oh, that projects to over 1,300 yards offense. Are you kidding me? You don't want to give the ball back to Tech, though. They still have a time on the board and too much time. Savage weaves his way. Gets the first down, makes a miss into the secondary. So he'll be brought down by McBath, but try to get him in the open field by yourself. Well, Joe Garcia, poor Joe, was, was in the box unblocked, and Joe had both ankles broken by Savage. I mean, watch Savage right here take the underneath handoff. Watch 49 in the white jersey appear, and whoop, make you miss. Unbelievable. Savage does have some dipsy do make you miss to him. From the 45, pocket holds up well. And wide open is Devereaux, but it's intercepted. Picked off. It was thrown over the wrong shoulder. Jamar Wall with the pick. He had the inside position. That's Devereaux was available. But it was thrown well behind him. Yeah, if he had taken him more toward the, the uh, between the uh, left hash mark and numbers rather than down the middle of the field, he might have had a touchdown. Because the way the pattern was run, if he had taken him on the course instead of throwing it right 
at him, continued to lead him, might have been a different story. And, and never found the football. Couldn't even get involved in reverse roles like we saw before. Devereaux couldn't find the ball, and the interception was made easily. Defensive back that time found the football. Wall found it. Devereaux didn't. So Texas Tech, almost like a punt, though, for Oklahoma State. But can they get a stop? Because there's a minute 28 remaining, and a timeout left for the Red Raiders. Well, was calling the play. They scored in about that time in their first drive without having any time. <laughs> yeah, took a minute 27 in the first series of the game. Yeah. Went six plays, 69 yards. Harold on the cross, and it's Ed Britt. First down will stop the clock. He's corralled at the 39 by Meyer Tell Van Zandt. That's good news to have back in there, but a lot of space. Good for a 25-yard catch. How many plays of 20 yards or more have there been in this football game already? How many plays of 30 yards or more? 30 yards. Well, that's 327 yards passing for Graham Harrell. On 21 of 26, add to it, Amendola, no. Over to the far side, Grant Walker. Paris Cox puts him out, but he's got more yardage. Senior outside of Austin, Pflugerville, Texas. Uh, take a look at the at the route a little little bit of a bunch uh, the bunch uh, formation and, and unfold and just could not quite hook up but right now Graham Harrell or he did hook up and kept the speed and bounce Graham Harrell has thrown for over 300 yards for the 13th time in his career and he's shortly going to hit 400 for the seventh time in his career and he's going to set a, a personal record here he's on track to just shatter a bunch of things you can see the center Shannon Burns adjusting with blocking assignments now they're pinching on the nose. Harrell had to get rid of it in a hurry. Amendola, single coverage, first down. That'll stop the clock to the 40-yard line. Dropped down by Ricky Price, the free safety. Boy, both of these defenses are just trying to keep everything in front of them. They're staggered. I mean, they've taken so many body shots and head shots, they are just staggered. Read zone, settle. Catch the football. And then, then work for yards after catch. If it's man, continue to run. You read zone, settle into a spot where your quarterback can find you in a little pitch and catch. It's that simple. Harold, pressure coming. And uh, it would have been intercepted. There was a D back. Patrick Levine got his hand on it, but the corner was just sitting there waiting for it, lacing. Or was it Cox? It was Cox over there. Brandon Carter got beaten at the line of scrimmage. The big right guard got beaten for too quick, too much of a pressure on, on a quick basis and Harold uh, had to get rid of the football that's only his sixth incompletion of the day he came in completing 75 percent three out of every four he's much better than that today so now second and ten at the 41 of Oklahoma State little shovel nice idea Shannon Woods gets the first down that'll stop the clock again inside the 30 brought down by Donovan Woods the former quarterback who pulled him down from behind. I'm telling you, Mike Leach is the master play caller. This guy, I mean, he, he's like, he reminds me of Bill Walsh. You know, Bill Walsh ran the West Coast offense. Mike Leach has taken the spread offense to the scientific level that Bill Walsh took the West Coast offense. He's phenomenal. Quite a comparison. I, I, it's, I think they're similar. On first down, Alan Dolan can't get away that time. Takes a shot in the small to the back. You know what it's like? Though? Price. Here, here's, a, here's an example of the comparison. They're calling timeout here. Bill Walsh used to say, when we run the ball for four yards, the defense thinks they're getting killed. We complete a four-yard pass the West Coast offense, they think they stopped us. We'll take those four-yard passes all day long. And, and that's what Mike Leach is saying. I'll take those little four-yard passes. Just string three together, you have a first down. They're very, very similar in the way they spread the field and attack all quadrants of it. So they're even at a higher percentage right now, 80% so far in this game on possessions and scores. 62% coming in. Well, our college football center to Triple Header will continue. Owls of Rice matching up with the six ranked Longhorns in Austin. Going to be a difficult duty. Then UCLA. Can they bounce back after a shellacking in Utah? They go up against the Huskies at the Rose Bowl in a Pac 10 showdown. Great college football all day and this evening, right here in high definition on FSN. It's going to be tough to duplicate the first half we've had. It is second and six at the 26, and now Texas Tech is out of timeouts with 33 seconds left. They have plenty of time the way they can execute on a short field. All they have to do is get first downs, and they've got an opportunity here on second and six. That'll stop the clock with the movement of the chains. On the comeback route, Amendola again pushed back the D-back Van Zandt on that side. Well-run route again by Amendola. 
Well, uh, Oklahoma State has fallen into a pattern, Joel, of, of rushing three, dropping eight, rushing four, dropping seven. I thought early in the game they came with a little more pressure and, and they were having some, some better success. But then they gave up some big plays and had to back out of that mentality. But right now, they're just allowing Carroll to just carve them up like a surgeon. 422 yards of total offense of the first half so far for Texas Tech. First and 10 for the 14 and overshoots Crabtree. Uh -oh. He's available early, but the Heat got to Graham Harrell again. Yeah, as I said that, they come with the blitz. Marcus they brought Brown. Marcus Brown, the linebacker, on the blitz. And, and I, I think that can be effective. You have to mix it up. You know, you can't stay with any one thing. And, and Marcus Brown is going to come clean. You have to block down, inside out. You can't block outside and let the inside guy be a free runner to your quarterback. Two to each side for Harrell. Amendola. He almost looks like he's uncovered the slot on the far side. Now they pick him up. Harold with heat side, backside pressure, puts it up to Amendola. He did it again. He made the catch, but now, and it is a first and goal, they've got to hustle up to the line. He can spike. You know, they get four, a fresh set of four downs. If they want to, they can spike and take some time. It looks like that's what Harold's thinking about doing. Well, that's trust, and Amendola turns around in time because Harold put it up before he looked back. Yep. Now he won't make the spike. And and touchdown! <laughs> Michael Crabtree's third touchdown of the game. Make the spike from a curveball. They did the same thing, the same route they ran, Joel, when they threw to the back hip to Crabtree initially on one of his touchdowns. This time, Dan Merkin threw a touchdown pass to beat the Jets. Harold gives all the indications it's going to be a spike. Fakes the spike and throws to the back hip. What a catch by Crabtree. Are you kidding me? That guy's got blue fingers now. He has got some hooks on him. That was a fastball. Outside, he snared him. Kralika for the point after. 35 to 28. A seven point lead now. That's 14 unanswered by Texas Tech. You, you know, that's a great call, Joel, because. Harrell threw the ball, the only place that could, that his receiver could make a play on it, throw the fastball outside to the backside. And Crabtree rewarded him, shows flexibility, the hips turn to catch, to plump the ball like that. I mean, he has got some soft, soft hands. And Crabtree can do it all. Here's a little pivot route to the sideline. He's gonna get, get some yards after the catch. Crabtree's gonna make people miss, take it to the end zone showing his big physical ability at 6 3 2 10. And here's the one that's amazing. Just lunges with his upper body, not his lower body, and maintains his balance and turns a good play into a great play. And then this very, twice he's done this, the big spike from the back hip, touchdown. He caught another one earlier on the same deal, not a big spike to throw that back hip and, and turn and, and, and hip flexibility, catch the ball and score. He is outstanding. And look at Harold's numbers. Are you serious? 388 and we're just at the end of the first half four touchdowns he's got 18 touchdowns and two interceptions right now that is ridiculous <laughs> Cox and Devereaux wait for the kick from Trialica and it's going to be Tommy Devereaux from the five he almost busted one earlier not this time as he spin around and can't make the last man miss so five seconds left in the wildest half we have seen in a long, long time. You know, Savage, Savage has given a big lift, a big boost to this Oklahoma State offense, and they've responded. But too bad he can't play linebacker or something because they need some kind of a lift on the defensive side of the football. And Harold's just joking about how he faked that spike and just threw the bullet to the backside for Crabtree, a la Dan Marino against the Jets. <laughs> That'll do it. A knee taken by Zach Robinson. So a spectacular display offensively by both teams. But who is going to show up in the second half? And the team that can get the stop. That's the team that's going to come out on top. Oh, yeah. This thing is obviously far from over. There's a lot of offense left for both of these teams to empty out of the gas tank. Downstairs we go. Jim Knox. Thank you, Joel. I tell you what, Coach, this is like a heavyweight fight. Both teams offensively matching each other, blow up a blow. Going in the halftime right now, what adjustments can you tell us in order to try to slow down Graham Harrell and company? Well, we got to get pressure on him, then we got to tackle better. We, we're missing tackles in the open field and allow him to get bigger plays. Dantrell Savage also gave you a big lift on offense. Yeah, he's played well, so we just got to keep going, find a way to slow him down. Thanks for the 
time, Coach. Appreciate it. Right now, let's head to the studios and join Michael Eves and DeMarco Farr for the Itachi Halftime Show. Take it away, Michael. Someday he'll call her and she will come running and fall in his arms and the tears will fall down and she'll pray I want to fall line of scrimmage because they're so worried about somebody getting behind them. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the turning points of the game was when Harold and, and Texas Tech was backed up and he, and he threw the long ball that we showed that Crabtree made the upper body extension on in flip field position. And at that point, defensive coordinator Tim Beckman said, you can't blitz as much. We're going to have to play soft zone. Parrish Cox is going to bring back the Trulika kick from the one. And looking for a lane on the left side that never develops. Good kick coverage by Tech. And Oklahoma State looking at their possession chart, their drive chart, will have it at their own 16. This is nuts. One mistake, the interception. That's the only time they lost possession of the football. And that was basically, you know, equivalent to a punt. It backed Texas Tech up. It didn't really matter because Texas Tech scored anyway. I mean, it's just have to finish every drive. This is a game where your offense, whatever offense you're playing on, there is pressure to score, not a field goal. You have to score a touchdown every time you have the ball because the team that has it last is going to win it. Zach Robinson, Dantrell Savage in the backfield to start the second half from the 16. Savage wanted to go one way, alters it. Boy, you can't get him with a first hit. Maneuvers his way out of the 20 for a gain of four. What a change of direction. Through Savage and the leaders for Oklahoma State over the first 30 minutes of play. Pretty balanced, you know, threw for 100, had a, had a running back go for 91, and a couple of other. Uh, Kendall Hunter went for 74, Robinson went for 62 himself, 20. and Bryant he balanced it out with four catches, 48 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, I, th I think Oklahoma State's at its best when they're balanced. They were pretty balanced that first half. Bowman watching lower side in this slot. They're going to run into that side. Bowman will block for him. And then. Savage was taken care of by the man that Bowman tried to block. Marlon Williams, weak side backer, took care of that pretty well, didn't he? A gain of about three, three and a half. Here's the keys. Uh, not bad. You know, the one interception, it, it was costly, though, because you have to almost score every possession. Improved tackling, big goal minus. Too many missed tackles. Field position, that was a wash. So the biggest problem, you got to get people on the ground. You got to tackle people. Oklahoma State. Yards after catch for, for Texas Tech was a big, big factor in their offensive productivity. Nine of nine on third down to the first half. How does it start for Oklahoma State in the second half? And Robinson on the option dive series. As he faked to the up man, gets the first down across the 26 near the 27. Yeah, he, the back that he faked to turned into a lead blocker for him. We have a sophomore center and a sophomore quarterback. And Lewis doing a good job of, of reaching and getting his defender on the ground. There's the back that was fake to the lead blocker. If he had gotten a, a more secure right. block on, on Wall, that could have gone for big yards. He just kind of shoulder blocked and brush blocked him a little bit. Still a first down to the 27. And that is going to be key. Long sustained drives for Oklahoma State to keep Harrell off the field. It's away, it's away. Quick win to Bowman. Can he make a miss? Yes, he does. Big yardage. Have to protect it from behind. He does that. It's all the way to the 48. Once he got past the corner and make it the free safety, McBath. Yeah, and, and McBath limped off the field. McBath missed the tackle on Bowman, and then McBath limped off the football field. Now, the catch is one thing. There's McBath closing on him. Plant, oh, overran him. And McBath hurt himself right there and, and, and leaves the football field. Savage shorts out of the field. Not much available. Makes the most of it, though. He is tough to get a square look at. Yeah, he, 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 if he gets blown up with a, uh, just a full body hit, it's his fault. Everything should be a glancing blow with his ability to make people miss. And Joel, uh, Oklahoma State's already one for one on third down on this drive. They're 10 for 10 now in the game. They were nine for nine in the first half. 10 for 10, that's a big factor in them trying to help the defense a little bit by keeping them off the football field. So the, for the first time in three weeks, Savage is available, and he's got 104 yards. In, in helping with 244 for his football team, basically half a football. Now a little waggle action, looking the other way, deep, going for the tight end for the first time, and overshooting him. Contact with Pettigrew, wanted a flag, the junior from Tyler, Texas, 
All locked up with Daniel Charbonnet, who's just taken over at safety for McBath. Yeah, and there were two uh, two defenders in, in the area on that particular play. Pettigrew, he drew a crowd, you know, and uh, hit, closing on the backside is Wall, and Charbonnet is, is involved in the front side. And, and Pettigrew's a weapon at six foot six. I mean, he has a size mismatch for safeties and corners, and he runs better than most linebackers. Bobby Reed, Watson, number 14, in the game in the slot. Same side of the field as Seth Newton, lower half. Design run. Can he get to the marker? Right at the first down marker. It'll depend upon the spot. I think he's going to be short by one yard. I agree with you. That will be their first third down conversion they did not make. They, will they go for it on fourth? You have to. The way they're running the football, you have to say to your offensive line, look, we've run for about 250. This, you have to be able to get us a short yard here. You have to. I think about the option again, the way they've been successful with it. Now Crossland, their short yardage guy that didn't get the block you were talking about earlier, has just taken over in the backfield. And here they go with the sugar huddle again. Very quickly to the line. They're going to throw. He's got Bowman going deep. Can he get the ball to Bowman? No. Oh, yeah. Under throw. Wow. Under wow. throw. Garcia caught up with the play, but it was available. Actually, it looked like it was a late release on the pass, too. And Bowman, I, I thought Garcia didn't find the ball soon enough. I thought there was going to be interference the way Garcia was playing Bowman more than the football, but Garcia did recover and find the football. Bowman couldn't come back and make a play on the football, and as you described, the ball's under throw. Uh, and Garcia, look, if just at the last second, and he, he contacts Bowman, but he, the, the official felt that he was trying to make a play on the football, and he kind of nudged Bowman out of there as Bowman's trying to reach behind him for a contested catch. No call, though. They give Garcia the defensive play. Big, big stop on downs right there. So it'll be first down, great field position for Texas Tech. First, second half possession. Harold, wide open on the far side. It's a first down. Going to Ed Bratton. Ed Britton, rather, takes it into Oklahoma State territory at the 45. And, and Texas Tech, you talk about there was one punt, and, and it was a good punt. It was like for 56 yards. Other than that, touchdown. Five of those bad boys. But that's, that's uh, I mean, that, that was a moral victory to, to actually make them drop back or, or take it, go into punt formation and make the four punt. Well, one of the few times we've seen press coverage on the outside receivers. Let's see if Crabtree has single on the bottom half of the screen. Safety shades towards Crabtree's side. They want to go to crack three anyway on this spin. Nice footwork for a guy that big as he gets six down to the 39. And the leaders for the Red Raiders offensively. You can spread it out with these guys. Well, they did it in the air. I mean, we saw Oklahoma State, and they were very good on the ground. 11 catches, the, the record for a single game. Robert Johnson had 15 catches for Texas Tech. Amendola is on track to break that bad boy. And look at the big play capability of Crabtree. Seven catches, almost half of them go for scores. And Harold's numbers were mind-boggling. Trips on the wide side of the field to go to the opposite side, though. And it's L.A. Reed breaking tackles for a first down. Down to the 28. So now Keyes looking back at what we talked about at the top of the telecast for Texas Tech. Well, they wanted to get off to a quick start and silence the crowd. Woo, did they ever. Yards after catch. Wow, did they ever. Downhill, the only negative. Oklahoma State has pounded them for 228 yards on the ground. But their passing game has been a little bit better than Oklahoma State's running game. Hence, they have the one touchdown lead. Short field down to 28, starting to the 39. And a setup on that side. Fake the ball. Ball's out, and it's recovered. Nathan Peterson, who got a sack earlier. Look what I found. And Harold's saying it's an incomplete pass. He's saying that was a shovel pass. He never had possession. Call it incomplete. It looked like Woods ran with it. Yeah, it looked like he secured the ball and made a football move after the after the shovel pass, then just lost control of it. Harold is trying to buy the fact that it's an incompletion and not a not a, uh, a fumble and a potential turnover. Mike Leach isn't really buying it either. Will the re the, uh, they review every play? I'm not sure that this will be reversed. But here's the little screen. And now, okay, he has it, secures it, puts it away. That's a fumble. He, play, he knocked it out with his own right. knee. That was lost without contact by Shannon Woods. Quick one for Des hey, Bryant. Man, open field play and a big one at that. On the outside, Chris Parker coming up big. 
That is Shannon Woods' first fumble of his, of his career. career. Yeah, it Over 200 touches yeah. without a fumble. I mean, that he has been the best of ball security. Came into the game with 202 career carries without ever putting the ball to the ground. Well, the first down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com. Live better with savings up to 70% on amazing deals from Overstock.com. It is all about the O. On second and long. Savage falling down, trying to make a cut again on Parker's side. He's been involved in the first two snaps. The cornerback out of Dallas, a senior. And how ironic is it that Shannon Woods' first fumble of his career at Texas Tech is caused by himself? I mean, there was no contact by a defender. He knocked it out of his own grasp with his own kneecap. I mean, it's kind of like an unforced error, basically. They go with the quick rhythm offense. Called the play of the line. Bobby Reed, one of five wide receivers for Zach Robinson. Will he call a run as he spreads the defense? A run of his own. On the shadow cross, Bowman gets the block from Reed. Oh, he lost. Yep, he lost control, and then he held on, but he's short by, I think, the bottom of the foot. Joel, he got indecisive when he got up to the blocker. I mean, he has to realize where the chains are. If he made one quick decision to get it upfield with his strength and power, he gets the first down easily. But he's as he as he receives the football on the shallow cross, which he's been so good with, I mean, he's trying to decide which way to go, and he runs right up his blocker's back. I mean, if he cut it up inside initially and made a quick decision, he gets that first down with ease. He was trying to make too big a play out of it, and as a result, didn't get what he needed. Here comes that power formation to the left side again. It's going to be Crossland, and he squirts free. He's got the first down. I like the call. More than less than about a foot. And they get it out to 42, almost 43 yard line. They know they're going to have to outscore Texas Tech to win the game. I thought that's and by they, a big margin. I thought that's what they do, Joel, on the on the other sugar huddle fourth and short when they went deep. They threw the ball deep to the tight end pedigree and it didn't work out. That time fourth and short. They went the last two third down conversions, though, they haven't gotten done after going 10 for 10 to start the game. Quick one. And in the flat is Savage. When I talk about outscoring Texas Tech, you know in a game like this, Texas Tech is going to get about 50, 55 points at least. So if you're stuck on 28 with 849 to play, look at the possibility of 45 to 55 of your own to have a chance, and maybe you can get a break. A couple of stops, or they turn the ball over again. Exactly. Uh, you know, you, you want one turnover on downs equivalent to the, the turn the football over on downs equivalent to a turnover, and, and then the fumble, the unforced error fumble. Savage for the first down. He's got it off the right side. He's down already. Ball came free after he hit the deck of the 45. We were kidding at halftime and said, okay, it's going to turn into a defensive struggle in the second half. Well, the very first time Oklahoma State has the ball on fourth and short, they go snake eyes and try to go deep, and it doesn't work out. Texas Tech defense gets it on down. And then, as, as Texas Tech offense is moving it, they're an unforced error on Shannon Woods, so the defenses haven't stopped anybody. It's basically the offenses have stopped themselves. But here in the third quarter, with, uh, you know, almost half of it gone, neither team has scored right now. And this is Oklahoma State's second possession. So Oklahoma State, 41 yards of offense on the option. Get him out of the edge, Kendall Hunter. Nice the true freshman, he hits it for her. He just shot it. Once he saw he had some space, he didn't wait for that block to finalize. He went through the arm tackle down to the 30. Bowman doing a great job on Garcia. And, and Bowman, this is going to make Bowman a lot of money at the next level. They know he's talented in terms of catching the football. But watch him lock up here and sustain, sustain, sustain. The back cuts it inside. He was trying to hook Garcia and give him a lane to the outside. Nice job by Bowman doing the dirty work, the blue collar stuff. And all the NFL scouts have noticed that this guy gets after it on the edge block. He cuts people, stays after people. And uh, he's going to make himself some money with that kind of work ethic. Yeah, they had to stop him momentarily. McBath was hurt. So they got the free safety off the field. He has been nicked out. Charbonnet has taken over once again at safety. And now they bring in Anthony Hines. So Hines is going to be there. Now Charbonnet's off the field. Pretty tail. One of the few times we've seen the eye. It's a first down. It's available. There's the tight end. He drops it. And it was a perfect throw. Yep. Just got it over. The up man. And Pettigrew knew Joel. He knew he dropped it. You saw him very dejected, face first on the field for a while. 
That's a catchable football. Pettigrew has got the hands and athletic ability to get that done. Six foot six. Got to catch that football. Would have put your team in a first and goal situation, basically. Middle linebacker wasn't deep enough. The depth wasn't there from Williams on the coverage. Should have been a first down. Should have, could have. Now second and ten from the 32. Robinson. Can he get a block? Maneuvering his way and spins down to the 27 for a gain of five. Athletic waterback. He ran better than 1,000 yards, threw for 1,500 yards his senior year in high school. Oklahoma State averaging over seven and a half yards per carry of the football. That is getting it done up front. And that helps other teams down the road of the Big 12. You can play keep away. You can, what you can do to Texas Tech, exactly. In the last sentence, it's new. He said, I'm not sure about my defense. We haven't played anybody that really will hammer it right near, down your throat. And Oklahoma State's going to, and I wonder if my team will hold up to it. Is this too much time to play again? Timeout has been called. Flag Seven, came out from the field judge. Texas Tech has used their first time out of the second half. The field judge coming over. Did they get the timeout before the flag? Looks like it. Yes, he's going to pick it up. We'll find out what State does. They need five on third down. We return to Stillwater. Talked about him earlier, the middle linebacker. Nice job by Williams. One on one in space against Savage, who is so slippery. Excellent job. Now, all of a sudden, after going 10 for 10, Oklahoma State is missed on three straight third down conversions. Two of them ended up fourth and a yard or less. This one, though, is too many yards and they have to settle for the field goal opportunity. Ricks is going to try a 43 yarder. He did not miss inside the 40 last year. He's got plenty of distance. 53 yarder, 55 yarder to his credit. It's on its way. And did he get it inside? No. It's off the upright. Wow. You can see, was it going to fade? Because he hooked it a little bit off his foot. So another missed opportunity on a 43 yard field goal drive. He had made 18 straight inside of 40 yards. Had made 18 straight. And this one, not enough. Hook, hook, hook. Bingo! Right off the left upright and not deflecting through, and Ricks is like, oh no. Oklahoma State, they need it. Better than 100 degrees down in the field. So Indian summer, it's still around. And Oklahoma, peril after the play fake. Plenty of time. And a grab by Ed Britton again. Secured it for a first down, led perfectly by Harold. Jacob Lacey with the pop. And neither team taking a lot of time between ah, snaps and our Aplac trivia. And you got to hustle this one in. Tech has now scored in 121 consecutive games. The last team. Can you name the last team to shut out the Red Raiders? Oh, baby. It'll be a first down for Tech. Their own 45, leading by seven. No scoring so far in the third. After we saw nine touchdowns in the first half. Now an isolation play. And it's just overshot Shannon Woods down the sideline against Levine, the outside backer. Didn't lead him. It was behind him and over the wrong shoulder. I have a question. When's the last time a Texas Tech wide receiver has dropped the football? We saw Pettigrew not take advantage of his opportunity. When those opportunities present themselves, you have to capitalize. In the fourth and one, when they try to go deep to Bowman and the ball is thrown late and underthrown. Another one. You have to capitalize on those situations because Texas Tech scores so quickly and so dramatically. Now on second and ten. Behind the intended target. Levine got a hand up there. It was Brett Walker. Yeah. It was the intended receiver, but it was way behind him. One of the few poor passes we've seen from Harold to that extent. Well, he looked back at Harold. Walker and Harold looked at each other like we're on different pages. Harold read one thing. He thought he was going to run a pivot route and stop, and, and, and Walker kept running. That's the first time I've seen a wide receiver and a quarterback on totally different pages. He thought Walker was going to hook up. Walker continued to vacate that zone area. Third and ten. They slow down the Red Raiders. Tech gave it away the last time they had it. Put a stunt and a blitz, but Harold gets away, and he's got the first wow. down going to Crabtree. 
Crabtree bumped out of bounds. They gambled and got burned down the 37. He's knocked out by Calvin Mickens. How did Harrell squeeze through that pressure? This is what I'm talking about. If I'm an offensive lineman, I'll go back and kiss him right in the forehead. Because this guy, the feet that he has, and how he has pocket presence, look at him just slide step up right between them very calmly, never, never concerned, and, and, and delivers the football. I mean, that is a quarterback that has a great feel for what's going on around him, like eyes in the back of his head and on the side of his head in the pocket. And he's only been sacked three times all year. It's good for 18. Tech has not faced many third downs today. That conversion made them four of six on the afternoon. Up at nine for Buck 60. They've misdirected and then get it off to Kobe Lewis. Lewis zigzags his way inside the 33 down to the 32. There was definitely con collision in the backfield when Ed Britt <laughs> and in motion came across. You got an injured uh, or that just a, a helmet laying out there. And Levine's. Out in the, out in the middle of uh, the middle of nowhere as well. You ready for Rice in Texas later tonight? It's going to be an old Southwest Conference reunion, you know, an old battle of the Southwest Conference revisited. Texas, uh, I think they're going to try to get a little healthy back in Austin. It'll be second and five. Now a time that has been called by Oklahoma State, so each team has used a precious second half timeout early here in the third. It's a 35-28 lead, a shot. Almost 10 minutes gone by in the second half. We don't have a point so far. You know what got both teams out of rhythm, Joel? Halftime. I mean, the worst thing that happened to them, both these teams were red hot, executing offenses like I've never seen. They go in for halftime, cool down, come back out, and haven't been able to execute. That's the a valid point. The defenses haven't stopped them. They've stopped themselves by not executing like they did in the first half. They shouldn't have taken a halftime. We would have had 150 oh. points scored in this game. Leader in the Big 12 in third down conversions. They're on top of the situation so far today. They need a little more than two. Harold with the pocket holding it up. Now it's starting to unfold and too tall for Cody Lewis. He also had Nathan Peterson, the end dropping and in his face. It's going to be a difficult proposition. Mike Cleese has got to go. He's gone. There's no way he's here. Lee can give him a 10 point lead. This he is be, going to go, though. Yeah, this would be, that would be what, though, about a 46 yard field goal somewhere in there? 45 yeah, 46? Yeah. Last of the long for Terlika this year has been 45. He's got a career best of 52, but they will go for it. At least we think. On fourth and a couple. Yes. Lewis. No. Won't get there. No. Shooting from the outside. What a big play by Quincy Patrick, the Richard freshman from Columbus, Georgia. Yes, it's turned into a defensive battle here in the second half. We saw an offensive clinic in the first half, and all of a sudden, screeching halt. No points whatsoever. And this is just getting after it. Come, come down to the inside and, and not block. And that's you better do that when you're not blocked. Unblocked. Texas Tech major brain cramp up front. You cannot let a defensive lineman who's just, I mean, there's fire coming out of his nose. And, and Patrick says, You're not gonna block me, I'm gonna tackle you. Only down by seven. The Cowboys get it back. Instead of five to play in the third. A lot of time for Robinson hey. and wide just off the fingertips of Jeremy Broadway. It almost looked like it surprised him a little bit when he made his turn. See, just out of sync a little bit, Joel. They were in great sync and rhythm in the first half, and here in the second half, it's like one of the cylinders just died on You know, most coaches, including Mike Leach, will tell you, they feel like they're in the hall locker room too long. Halftime is too long as we head back downstairs. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, checking the field conditions. We checked with you in the first half. 125, Stan, the thermometer right here. What does it say? 130. 130, so the heat is rising, guys. And it looks like you're in the shade there, Knoxon. That's where I need to be, Dave. <laughs> Second and ten. Needed a chip outside. Kendall Hunter. I think he's got it. Across the 42, he does have a first down. They'll move the chains. Little misdirection action. 
Yeah, that, that's that's well conceived. That's a that's a well designed play. And, and, and all you're trying to do is, is, is freeze the linebackers for a little bit. I mean, it, it's very very uh, tough on the linebackers. You're seeing all that crisscrossing action, and you make them freeze for one half a beat. And they can't scrape over the top and make the tackle as easy as they would have if they had quicker recognition. Just trying to make that first step the wrong move. Yep. Or or freeze them in in, in their own footsteps. So first down for Oklahoma State. Both teams have failed on fourth down tries. Little end around to Darius Bowman. Can he turn the corner? He's got good yardage. Bam. Legs taken out from under him. Big play by Jamar Wall out of the secondary. Still got close to five. Well, Bowman needed himself out there to block for him. Nobody at the wide receiver position did anything on the perimeter to get him started. He is their best blocker. He's their best player at that wide receiver position. Somebody, if somebody just threw a block for him, I think that could have been a very, very big play. It'll be a second and five, almost six. What a day to be in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Now the Cowboys try to tie it up with three and a half to play in the third. Robinson on the option action. Good deep. Nice. All the way inside the 40. Runs up the back of his own blocker, the offensive lineman. <laughs> Okun, the left tackle, got in his way a little bit. Well, the guy that Robinson got between the rock and the hard place was Tillman. Tillman didn't know what to do. He froze Tillman as he came down the line of scrimmage. Watch 56 in the white jersey. Doesn't know whether to take quarterback or pitchman, so he takes nobody. And then he ends up missing Robinson. And Robinson has uh, gained over, uh, over 100 yards on the ground for him, or at 100 yards for himself on seven lugs. On first down, Hunter is behind a wall over to the left side. Short side, though, and only about three yards. He's knocked out of bounds close to the 22. So Zach Robinson is best, and this is only a second career start. He had 90, 90 yards rushing. Well, they're going no huddle. They're going sugar huddle. Oklahoma State is trying to up the tempo. Noxie told us that on the field, it's 130 degrees. You go up tempo, you fatigue the Texas Tech defense, you make them run a little bit to the perimeter on those sweeps and options. Now you get them a little bit tired. Trying to tie things up on a long drive. So there are three running backs now. And I'm including the quarterback that have over 100 yards rushing. Robinson with a quick one. It's Kendall Hunter. And he's down to the 19. No, he's still not down. What quit on the play and close to a first down. We'll talk about extra effort from the true freshman on a tighter. We'll take a look at that after Dr. Pepper game break. Michael Lees, what's the latest? Michael, that is coming up next in HD on FSM. So now Hunter, 111 yards rushing. Robinson, 102. Savage, who's in the backfield with Robinson, 107. Nice bounce. Man, you get the trifecta going there. You have the triplets. Oh, my week. You got a first down. It's going to be delayed for Savage. Big yeah. hole up the middle. We'll put him down after a gain of eight. He's got it to the seven. Good play call. And he has been the catalyst. I mean, I think Oklahoma State's offense has been waiting for Savage to get back in the fray. But he wasn't neat handoff here. Nice job up front. You talk about sealing people and, and creating a, a running lane. I mean, there is nobody within five yards of him. Savage again, bending into the boundary. Still makes a miss, catch the first and goal. He's inside the five. Finally brought down by Brian Duncan, a redshirt freshman with Baton Rouge. Boy, you've seen Hunter's determination. You see Savage's determination. Oklahoma State at, at the running back position, including quarterback Robinson, has been giving second and third effort all afternoon. And, and this is the kind of drive they want. Multiple play, sustain the drive, melt the clock. Now they have to finish and put points on the board. Not three, they have to put seven. Started back with their own 32 on a first and goal inside the five. They've had it for better than four and a half minutes. Changing the play at the line is the sophomore quarterback, Zach Robinson. Needs some help. Uh -oh. hit from the blind side. It's loose. No whistle. Yes, finally. Incomplete. His arm was moving forward. Well, Williams, uh, Marlon Williams. Williams got his hand on that one. And, 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 and it, was, it was the front side of Robinson being a right-handed quarterback, but he was looking left the whole time. 
never felt the pressure from his front side. And, 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 and Williams just gets it, gets the, the ball airborne, and Williams had it, uh, Bowman had his man beaten. And Williams, that was a great play. Again, pocket presence, a, a younger quarterback. You can't really feel that kind of pressure. You never look to that side whatsoever. Robinson looking over the sideline, getting the hand signals from the staff. It'll be a second and goal inside the five. Savage bouncing it inside. He's down inside the three. It's a third and goal. Trailing by seven. The final two minutes. A very quiet third quarter. They've stopped it themselves for the most part so far offensively. They, they have moved the ball, but they have also put it on the ground. They have in this drive that's consuming uh, the remainder of the third quarter is exactly what Oklahoma State wants. They want to play keep away. They want to play productive keep away. Burn time and limit Texas Tech's opportunities exposing their defense. There's that power play on the left side. It's going to be Robinson play on the outside. He should be able to get there. Touchdown Oklahoma State. Great call. They gave Robinson a two-way go off the play action fake. They got him on the perimeter. He could either throw it, he had a receiver available, or with his running ability, if he saw daylight, Joel, do exactly what he did. Tuck it, get inside the pylon. Excellent, excellent call right there. And watch, the same deal, sugar huddle, great play action fake. Everybody from Texas Tech sucked up inside, and, and Robinson has an easy journey into the end zone. Great call by Larry Fedora the offensive coordinator, or Mike Gundy, the head coach. Maybe they collaborated, but it was called at a perfect time. Ricks for the point after. Don't forget, he missed a field goal earlier that hit the upright. Otherwise, Oklahoma State is leading by three. There you go. Instead, we're tied. No complaints. It's even at 35 with a minute 15. Left of the third. again as we wind our way to the final minute 15 of the third quarter. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, Kia Sarah. College football Saturday on FSN. Zach Robinson playing way beyond his years. Sophomore and only his second career start. But boy, what about the boys of this young man? Over to the near side, L.A. Reed is going to take the kick at the four. And pass 25. Bumped out of the sideline. A nice move by Reed all the way to the 37. Dr. Pepper, game break time. Michael Eves, let's head into the studio. From the 37 of first down for Harold and Tech. Man, Danny Amendola, red hot. Now, what a first half Amendola had. First catch of the second half, he had 11 to re lead the Red Raiders. 11 receptions for 152 yards. And he's in position to break the record. The record's 15 in a single game. Robert Johnson, he just breaks his cut, uh, breaks his pattern, cuts it to the sideline. And, and you talk about timing. The ball's in the air before he comes out of his break. That's how in sync Amendola and Harold are. That's how in sync Harold and Crabtree are. This is all about preci precision timing and rhythm. And uh, Texas Tech does it as well or better than anybody in the country well, on the football. In three games and three quarters, Amendola has more catches already this season than he had all of last year. Right, right. He's up to 38. He had 36 last season. Oh, block and a big play. Amendola. Inside the 25, but Harold got a huge block as Van Zandt makes the stop, and he needed it. See, Texas Tech show me something here, Joel. They're on the road. Oklahoma State goes on a long drive and ties the game. Texas Tech says, I'm answering right now. I'm coming right after you. Watch Amendola. Nice, takes a little inside release. They let him go, and, and that's just, that's not a good enough relationship between linebackers and secondary. You can't give that big of a cavity. You have to ride him longer than that, or re him more severely than that. Inside the 23, a first down for Tech. Already in field goal range. And 
put up for grabs and popped away from Crabtree. That long throw to the wide side. Jacob Lacey almost timed it for a pick. Exactly. It was uh, basically like a 15 yard out, but Harrell was throwing it from the right hash mark to the left sideline. And the ball is in the air a long time. That's uh, the kind of ball that uh, John Elway and guys of that caliber, Brett Favre in his prime, could throw a heat sinking missile on that particular round. We've got over a thousand yards of total offense, 1,037. And we're not through with the third yet. <laughs> Unbelievable. Trap me. Second and ten for Harrell. Pocket holds up again. He's got him wide open and overshoots him. He had Grant Walker. He doesn't seem to be in sync with him. They were looking at each other. They were on different pages. He doesn't seem to be as timed up with Grant Walker as he does. With, that was a touchdown, too. Yep, with, with, as he does with some of his other receivers. But uh, he, as he surveys the field, he said, oh, Walker's the guy, but not enough air under it, or Walker's not as fast to the football as Harrell anticipated. So third and 10, back at the 23. Wood stays in the backfield. Put a stunt up the boat, and it works. It pays off. They finally get to him. Second sack of the game, and it's Nathan Peterson also in on that stop. The other rush in. Cummings. Yeah. It was Maurice Cummings, the senior from Rosebud, Texas. They rushed four and dropped seven. But I think they twisted up front, didn't they? Yeah, but there, there was a little, a little, uh, a little going on here. They brought a linebacker, and he came in underneath. But pretty good edge pressure right there by Peterson. He just got the, the got the corner on, on Big Johnson that time. Jake Johnson not moving his feet well enough. So when we come back, is that's the final snap of the third and a quiet third, but the only points coming from Oklahoma State. Trilika, who's going to try to give Tech the lead once again. It'll be about a 46, 47 yard attempt. And a three, it's all even, 35 apiece. You're watching Big 12 Football presented by Kia Zero on FSN in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The senior from Friendswood, Texas, trying to give Tech the lead once again, and it's going to be a delay of game call? Yes. Stranger than fiction. Man. Out of a timeout between quarters. Yeah. Now, do you stay with this long field goal? That his career best is right there. 52 yards. This is going to be inside the 42. So officially, they'll call it a 51-yard attempt. Now, How does that happen? On this one, Joel, you have to make sure you get it airborne. There's a tendency to hit a two iron, a low line drive. You have to get the ball up. This is uh, more dicey in terms of guys getting penetration or off the edge, getting a hand on it. The last year he was 15 of 21. He's only had a couple of opportunities so far this year, two of two with a long of 45. But he did have his career best last year from 52 yards away. So for the lead. On its way, does it bend inside? No, he drew it, but it stayed outside the upright. Wrapped around it on the outside. Pretty good hit for the football right there. It was almost like Rick's. Rick's 43-yard attempt went way up the upright, hit it square dead in the center of the upright, and bounced back. Music bed. Get you jacked up to play some football, Joel. Conference opener in Stillwater, Oklahoma. The Big 12 opener. Oh! Going for it was Bowman. Denied on a bullet from Zach Robinson. Keith Tillman got in his way. I don't know if Tillman ever saw the ball. So that was the first snap after the failure on the 51 yard field goal try. By Trilika of Texas Tech. Joel Myers along with Dave Lapp and Jim Knox. Look at this number, Joel. 23 tackles for loss in the season by 16 different players. Texas Tech's got zero today. Hunter trying to make a miss out of the backfield. One of the few times he didn't get big yard. It's only a yard that time. It'll bring up a third and nine. Met right in the middle by Marlon Williams. Sophomore from Pflugerville. That tells you that Oklahoma State's offensive line's done a decent job. There hasn't been any penetration. And because uh, that's how you get tackles for loss. No quarterback sacks, no penetration. 
they've done they've done an outstanding job up front in that regard. Yeah, it's it's not UTEP, SMU, or Rice. They had 12 tackles for a loss against Rice last week. Right. It's Big 12 play. Totally different story. Des Bryant in motion. And a timeout is going to be used. They were confused. Yep. That's a cop in a game like this, you want to have those timeouts for the end of the game. It, it could could be a huge determinant. So in the opening minute of the fourth, tied at 35, valuable one. Gets away from Mike Gundy and his squad. Let's go, let's go. Well, Corn Huskers, Joel. 97 season, 29 to nothing. They gave up 40 to Ball State today. They're going to get their defense figured out this year. Now Robinson with protection. And it's going to be well under thrown for Des Bryant, who was available. Yes, he was. And he had absolutely just left Jamar Wall back about five yards. And that is the rather. first time that they have gone three and out Oklahoma State today. Three and out with a punt. Well, they started out 10 for 10 on their third down conversions, and they've uh, only converted one since, right? Well, how about this? First punt of the day for Matt Fodge. See, we could have made our letter in the first half, Joel. Just a punt today, we didn't have to do anything. And Morris, back deep waiting. The junior from Shadowwater, Eric Morris, who got a touchdown earlier for the Red Raiders. And a low, returnable type. Morris on the run. Made the first guy miss. Look out. Wow. Good return across the 35 to the 36 where the Red Raiders are going to have a short field, solid field position for Harold trying to break the deadlock at 35. We'll come back to Stillwater after this word from Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. <laughs> On the catch. At the 38, they were draped all over Amendola. Andre Sexton, the safety, was there. And did he get to him early? I guess the penalty would give him a yard. Pass interference, number 20 to the defense. 15. Spot foul. First down. Oh, right. yeah. Spot because it was complete. Right, he picks up the yard. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> Because it, it was pretty good coverage. I mean, he, he, was, he was all over when he did. He went through his back to make a play on the football. But uh, if you want to have the pass interference penalty, a one-yard gain is a pretty good, good thing to do it. Anyway. And Amendola almost lost it. As you saw him going down, he may have lost it, which would have been better off for Texas Tech. They would have gotten 15 on him. Harold, one of the few times he's been under center. And oh. hard to believe. There's the first one. A drop. That guy has been that good all day long. Danny Amendola leads them in receiving with 13, a career best today. And the record, single game record's 15. He would have crept within one if he had secured the pick on that one, but did not quite get it done. Perfect throw by Harold, too. And the sun wasn't a factor because the sun is, is uh, by the shadows, the sun wasn't in his, in his face as he turned around to find the football. The biggest surprise that the two teams combined for nine touchdowns in the first half over the first 15 minutes plus of the second half. And almost nine, a little more than 90 seconds of the fourth. We've only got one touchdown. And around mm. Edward Britton, the return man. He's got some wheels. And he's down. Right the line, put it down. Oklahoma State has recovered. Cowboys have the football. They say it is a fumble. Chatham came away with it. Guy that uh, disrupted the thing at the very beginning was Bryant. Uh, was Calvin Mickens, I believe, out of the secondary, coming up and, and, and disrupting things a little bit. The end around. Well, here's the end of it. Ball is swatted out of there. That's just a tackle and a strip by the big linebacker coming or defensive lineman running the football Cummings rip out of there. He, he basically fell on top of Cummings. That's why it's a fumble. Donovan Woods also in the congestion. On the carry. It's over to the left side. It's Kendall Hunter. Not much available. Gets about three, maybe four. He turned the corner. And a lot more than it looked like at the outset of the play down to the 33. The way Cummings took the ball carrier down, he took him down on top of his body, so the ground never became an issue. And he, he had his body between the ground and then ripped the football out of there. 
short field for Oklahoma well, State. In fact, this is the first time that either team has started in plus territory, yeah. in opponent's territory. And last week, Oklahoma State put their defense in, in, in bad situations down there at Troy. They'll fake it to Hunter. Now Whoa. pass plays available, Hunter. wide open. Touchdown, Oklahoma State, Jeremy Broadway. Thrown by Seth Newton, the other wide receiver. Boy, gadget play at a perfect time. The last two touchdowns, tremendous calls by Larry Fedora. Man, I'll tell you what, to, to run the rounds with that, the other touchdown, Zach Robinson, they faked the play action off of the sugar huddle, off the little power run, and, and he kept the ball and ran to the end zone here. They give it to the uh, receiver on the reverse. It's a reverse pass. And, and two guys that you wouldn't think would be involved. Newton passing the football to Broadway, and it was right down Broadway, and Broadway was wide open. Well thrown ball by Newton, a junior from Gerard, Kansas. And this is being uh, a flag was thrown, but it's being picked up. Oklahoma State, 15 yard penalty of being forced. That's a set the on the kick. It was a celebration penalty that's going to cost Oklahoma State 15 yards, and, and Mike Gunny's like, "What's up with that?" That's been his expression on a few flags today, and you can't blame him. So the point after, and a critical one for Ricks, who make it a seven-point lead this late with 12.25 remaining. It's only the second lead of the game for Oklahoma State. 28-21 the other time. And he gets it. So Ricks with the extra point. And the gadget play worked on the reverse. Seth Newton, Jeremy Broadway, they collaborate. And the Cowboys lead in this Big 12 opener by seven. Great call. Push-ups, come on. There's my former teammate. That's, that's, uh... You wore that helmet. That's Bubba, he borrowed it. That's Bubba Donnie. He used to wear leather helmets <laughs> in high school with no face masks. There's a reason why. I know why. <laughs> For the kick, is a, it, it's 15 yards further back, and it's L.A. Reed from close to the 20. Good return all the way to the 45. Well, that celebration penalty was costly. Kicking off from the 15, that's, that's worse than a safety. Is a safety a free kick from the 20. So uh, it, it affords Texas Tech basically a short field themselves. themselves. That was a very costly penalty. So put them down at the 44-yard line. Oklahoma State has been rare when they've had a lead. And now, can they hang on? 12-20 to play. It's a 56-yard field for Texas Tech. It's absolutely nothing. Two or three plays for them. But they've been slowed down by their own mistake. Shannon Woods have fumbled yep. in Oklahoma State territory. Man, points off a turnover now for Oklahoma State after the fumble by Edward Britton. Harrell out of the gun, straight four-man rush, and they got some pressure on him to flush him out. Who go to the boundary and get good yardage, about six. Joel coming, in, coming into this football game, Texas Tech was plus two in the turnover department. Oklahoma State was minus four. And uh, so far today, Texas Tech is losing the turnover battle with we got a great spot. They give him eight. Shinasa chased him out. As they've got to rotate a lot of guys in the defensive front four on a hot day like today. 92 of kick. Better than 100 on the field. Show blitz. They give it to Woods. He'll get the first down. Shannon Woods weaves his way off the right side down to the 41. Well, how quick can it be for Texas Tech? And that's what they're probably thinking. A quick score. Oklahoma State gets it back, and then they get it back with ample time. You know, it, it's going to boil down to Texas Tech, the, the complement of, of both offenses. Will they be able to run the ball well enough in the fourth quarter to win the football game? Will Oklahoma State be able to throw it well enough in the fourth quarter to win the football game? Low snap for Harold to go down and get. Over the oh, middle, oh, and oh. again. Inside the 10. See ya. He's in. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Unrealism. A career day continues for Danny Amendola. That's his 14th reception, and he's he's about 250 yards, isn't he? Something crazy. He was 192 yards before that catch. Now Harrell with that throw. Now as a new career pass, and we still have a ton of time. In passing yards, he's up to 537. 
And that's his, his fifth touchdown pass of the day, isn't it? He had six last week. He's got five this week. And this one's not over. We have almost a quarter to play. Trey Lincoln tries to tie it. Lincoln's left. Amendola, a broken coverage. I mean, the safeties vacate the middle of the field. It's, there's nobody deep. It's zero coverage. There's nobody back deep. And Amendola makes him pay. He splits the safeties as they try to recover before he crosses the goal line. And he took a lift. As he, as he was getting ready for uh, spotting that extra point, you could see him clutching that right arm a little bit. Well, for those of you watching on FSN Southwest and FSN Houston, you can see the start of the Rice Texas game by switching to FSN Plus on the local cable system or on DirecTV channel 667. And for the rest of our audience, we'll join the Rice Texas game immediately following this incredible one in this Big 12 opener between Oklahoma State and Texas Tech. You like defense? This is not the game for you. <laughs> Danny Amendola, 14 catches, 230. Three yards. He's 22 yards away from a single game record, and he's one catch away from a single game record. If he gets a if he gets a catch for uh, for 23 yards, he is the single game record holder, or he ties. If he gets two catches for 23 yards, he's the record holder in both categories. And I think he has a strong shot at doing exactly that. Well, more than three minutes gone by in the fourth, so there's a lot of time to get it done. Trilika kicks it away. It's going to be Parrish Cox from the three. What kind of field position can he give? The Cowboys, not much. So Oklahoma State, 21-22 yard line. Danny, Danny Amendola has been money today. He's kept working. He's, he's stayed with his routes. He's presented himself to Harrell when Harrell's been in trouble. He's run the tough routes over the middle. He's run the routes to the outside. He's been everywhere. And, and that's that's a tribute to this offense because Amendola is here, there, and everywhere. And makes the, the beautiful catch on a, on a tough ball with two defenders around him. And then finally, on his, on his uh, 14th catch of the day, finally creases the end zone. He had 13 catches before that without scoring a touchdown. Well, we really feel for you up at FSN Detroit because they're going to be leaving us in just a moment for a live event. <laughs> this is a good game. This is one that you don't get to sit in on many of theirs. It was a flag down on the kick, and it looked like an offside yeah, call Texas on the Tech kick. Was offside. So you got to make him kick it again. So that's going to be the case now. Mike Leach says, huh? Come on, what's going on there? How are we offside? So instead, what can they do with the opportunity? It would have been the 21-22 yard line, but Parrish Cox brought it back. Devereaux over to the near side. We've not seen a really big play on return so far today. Trilega tees it up, hits it back at the 25, not the 30, as they've moved it back five yards this season. Will it make a difference this time? Low line drive. And it's going to be same spot, the three for Cox. Set up on the right side. The opportunity, well, they get five, six yards out of it. Open field play. And a good one by the Red Raiders. Blake Collier, a linebacker. So Oklahoma State tied once again. will have it at their own 28. And, and they you, ran the ball. I'm surprised they're not trying to run it like they did in the first half. And, and, and as you look at it, Joe, with 11 minutes and 38 seconds, the goal for Oklahoma State is to take about six or seven minutes off the clock and, and, and put a touchdown on the board. It'll be Kendall Hunter. Ooh. And can he get away? That well, looked like a loss. That's the first one of the day if it is, right? It's a loss of about a yard. Yes, first tackle for a loss as they finally get him behind the line. Texas Tech came downhill on that one. Lyle Settenson said, you know what, let's blitz. It's a good play. Even if they run the football, it'll pressure the quarterback if they're throwing it. Let's come downhill and be aggressive and make them counter us. And Hunter had to make his first cut four yards in his own backfield. Stoffel's got the first tackle behind the line. Now on second and 11, got to get the ball to the man. That's five straight incomplete passes for Zach Robinson. So he's faded a little bit in his heat. Yeah, he, he's been a much more dangerous weapon with his legs than he has with his throwing arm today. Early on, he was pretty good. I, I, I got to give him credit. But uh, here, 
here in the last couple of quarters, he, he's missed some opportunities. He had a wide open Pettigrew on fourth down and short, and he, he threw late and under threw dramatically. That was an opportunity I know he'd like to have back, and he just has not been accurate with the football in the second half. He third down deep in his own territory underneath. Bowman makes a miss. The marker right wow. there. Beautiful play. He may have gotten it. The ball was almost spiked right at the first down marker. Chris Parker tripped him up. Does he have enough? A little short. Yeah. It looks like he's spotted about a foot shot. And, and the official saying his knee was down here. Then he reached forward and, and tried to stretch it out. That is going to be a full yard. And, and get the football for the first down. Watch Bowman. Great job of making, making a defender miss. Then what? The knee is down, and then he stretches. Ooh, that might be reviewable. That's pretty close. He made Charbonnet miss out, of the, out in the open field. I think this one you might have to take a look at again, potentially, and see where his knee was down and where the football was on this spot. They're going for it. What a gamble. On fourth and a yard, Robinson with Crossland, and Crossland got it. He's up close to the 40-yard line. That took some guts. Deep in your own territory in a tie game. That's a, that's a Mike Leach uh, call right there, but it went against him this time. And Mike Gundy saying, you know, this is uh, this is important. And I feel good about my offensive line. I've got three members of uh, in my running, uh, my two of my running backs and one of my and my quarterback have, each have 100 yards rushing. Boys, you've done a good job up front. Let me lean on you one more time. That's the call by Gundy. Savage, the single set. Well, he'd rather gamble with his offense right now than his defense. I think that's safe to say. Right. Final 10 plus minutes. Option roll. Robinson. Savage on the outside. And Savage with good yardage. About six on first down across the 45. Brought down by Jamar Wall. Oklahoma State has gone for it on fourth down three times. And they've converted twice. The only time they didn't convert is when they went fourth and short and, and they went to Pettigrew on the on the deep ball and that's the one that Robinson threw through late and under through that one could have been a huge play as well they've got 349 yards rushing thus far let's see if they keep him the ground which has been successful got him. should be a free snap yep got him. now go for the bundle and he will Des Bryant and he ever shoots him I don't blame him for that throw yep nothing to lose and he showed good arm strength that time because on some of the outs Maybe it's too tight. Maybe he's not stepping into it, but he's been short. I agree. I think it's a case of aiming the ball on some of those when he's been uh, inaccurate with the short passing game. And you see guys a little bit jumpy. You can't listen to the quarterback. You have to work your peripheral vision as a defensive lineman. Watch the football. When the ball moves, ball. you move. Defense. Five yard penalty. First down. And his left tackle also has to protect him. His left tackle stopped on the play. Oh, cool. Could not quit. He didn't hear a whistle. Keep playing. Because there was a free shot of the quarterback when he released the football. You've got to, you, you can, the quarterback can draw you off sides with that hard comp voice inflection anytime he wants to. You have to block that out and watch the ball. Savage again in the backfield. Robinson calls nice. his own number. And a nice little crease for about five. Four and a half, five yards down to the 45. They just want to keep it away from Graham Harrell. Nice job by Denning at the right guard position that time. They ran a little, a little counter, and it was a, it was a trap. It was a quarterback run, but the offensive line ran a trap blocking scheme up front, and Denning pulled from that right guard position and had a nice little kickoff block. And Denning is into the game because of the injury. To David Washington, their starting center, he's moved up. Uh, Koenig has gone over to the left side, yep. and Lewis has moved to the starting center spot. One injury caused a ripple effect of three changes in the interior. Ball on the ground. Uh -oh. And he got it back. Robinson covered it. He, well, he left his center without the football. So a break to recover it. And now it's going to be a third down with the clock moving. Well, Oklahoma State, basically, you, you, this is the simple, simplest thing to do. You have to ride the center. The quarterback has to ride the center with his hands a little bit longer, pulled out of there a little early. And, and, and maybe his center short snapped it just a little bit. Lewis is going to make sure that he hits the quarterback right in the hands. The last five third down attempts, Oklahoma State is two for five. They were ten for ten to start the game. So third and a little more than five. Almost six. Robinson, will they get there, breaks the tackle. Can't get through the second though. Down to the 41. You go again on fourth down. You got to. You got to. And I, I take it back. Now they are two for their last eight. They were 10 for 10 to start the game. And now they are 12 for 18. So they're two for their last eight on third down. 
They're two for three on fourth down. Will they make it on this fourth down? First down marker brought to you by Overstock.com. Best online price, Overstock.com. Guarantee and savings up to 70%. Shop at Overstock.com. All about the O. With the O come through here. Savage in the eye. Behind John Johnson. Big fullback. Fourth and more than a yard. Slide the tight end. Little wham play. Oh. Robinson in trouble. I don't think he got there. Nope, not he's by the mark. 40. I think he's in foot shot. Yep, not by the mark. Spot will tell us everything, but I think he's short. And Texas Tech says they did hold. Yeah, I think they did. I think, I think by the spot, Joe, I agree with you. He's not there. He needed to get closer to the 39. Ball spotted no. No, he, they can he, bring it in. Yeah, he, he, he's short by more than the length of the football. So got their last fourth down five. Or about the length of the football. Not this time, though. But Robinson, you know, you wonder the little, you know, pivot, little spin move, and run the option, and just not there. So Oklahoma State has given Texas Tech a very short field at the 40. On, on goal line and short yardage, it, you have to get penetration. See what Texas Tech does. If anybody leaks through, and they do, you, you can see the penetration. And, and a lot of white jerseys uh, are causing some havoc. Whitlock was one of the first disruptors. He walled off that side completely where he wanted to go. It made him cut back behind it, and he couldn't keep his balance. Nice, nice surge by Texas Tech's defensive line when they had to have it. Two to each side for Harrell. Their last drive didn't even take two minutes. Looking for the lead. Middle screen throws it away because he wanted a screen. It wasn't available. Peterson busted up the play. Yeah, he got a lick on Harold. He got a hit on him. Linesman's coming in to discuss something, and we didn't see a flag go down. No, now didn't. are they talking about, was there anybody in the neighborhood for the catch? Yes. Now, now they're going over to Texas Tech sideline talk about it see what it was it, it, hit, it hit an eligible receiver that new, you know there's a rule now where if it hits a lineman it's not as big an issue but that one hit Crabtree didn't it look like it he was in the neighborhood it'll be second and ten at the 40. Harrell's already thrown from 537 a career best plenty of time and on the out Edward Britt down on a knee makes the grab for a first down inside the 47. Move the chain. Seven and a half to play. And Harold, Harold just stands in there, and, and, and he knows he's going to initially take, he's going to eventually take a lick, and he just Nathan Peterson has been a thorn in his side. Nathan Peterson has a couple of sacks on the day coming in. Look at Harold's numbers. He's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, that is just efficiency at the utmost right there. Find some time on the play fake. Out in the open space, it's complete to Walker. They've missed a couple of times. That time, he found the transfer from Purdue. And forced out by former quarterback Donovan Woods. Good gain on first down, though. Better than eight. Harrell had been sacked twice on the season coming into today's game, and he's gone down twice today. So they have gotten some pressure on Harrell, but even when they have pressured him, he has stood in the face of that pressure and delivered some strikes, in particular the one early in the football game, right before taking a lick. He laid it out there perfectly for Crabtree, and Crabtree rewarded him with just a balancing act. Second of the yard. Don't forget if Tech gets the lead, Oklahoma State has only one timeout left. They've already used two in the second half. Right. Woods, lost yardage. Back at the 40. Maurice Cummings, a senior from Rosebud, Texas. His first year as a starter. Boy, did he penetrate. Yeah, that was, uh, that was very timely right there. On the underneath handoff that's been so so effective and he separated from the block and, and he made a, a, a big surge in an opportune time himself. I mean in the second half, you have to give credit to the defense. More of these guys have gotten off blocks and made plays in the first half. They were nowhere to be found. It was, it was like there was seven on seven. There wasn't any defensive linebackers or defensive linemen and linebackers. Four down territory anyway for Texas Tech. At the 40, it's third and three. 
Barrow behind Britton doesn't make any difference. He's got the grab in front of Martin Martel Van Zandt. They move the chains. We go back down to Jim Knox. All right, Joel and Dave, you may have noticed that Michael Crabtree has been extremely quiet here in the second half. As Mike Leach told me at halftime, Oklahoma State's doing a wonderful job. They're bumping him at the line of scrimmage. They're also starting to roll over a safety on him. Double coverage. Graham Harrell said before the game, a little surprised the previous three games, he was only drawing single coverage. But today in the second half, drawing double coverage. That's why he's quiet. And as a result, Amendola's got 14 catches for 233. Blitz comes up the middle. It's complete. Crabtree, as soon as Noxie talks about him, came back to catch it for a first down in front of Jacob Lacey. He's got it to the 19. And that time they paid a lot of attention to Amendola in the middle of the football field. You can't double everybody. That's the beauty of the Texas Tech offense. You make your reads, you read it out, and in the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the sideline, Crabtree wins easily. He won that battle one-on-one. -on -one. When they've been rolling to him and doubling him and putting linebackers underneath him and cutting the linebacker up, they've gone to, to uh, Amendola. And when they pay a lot of attention to Amendola, they go to Crabtree. They, Amendola has 14 catches. Crabtree has 10. They can't double everybody. Trips on the wide side of the field. The single is Amendola. Now they bring Britton to that side. Give it off to Wood. Big hole over the left side. Shoots it down to the 10. Make it the 11, they say. That 8. Patrick tripped him up. Got an injured, uh, injured Oklahoma State Cowboy down there. It's Quincy Patrick, who's uh, hurting. In a prone position that you don't like to see in a football field face down. Yeah, the left arm seems to be the area that's giving them the problems. Back downstairs. Noxie, what's the latest? All right, I tell you what, we're talking about the Oklahoma State defensive backs doing a pretty good job of Michael Crabtree. Just caught a pass right there, but Martel Van Zant uh, doing a wonderful job. He's been playing hurt today with a bad foot, but he is this week's Dr. Pepper honor roll player. That's exactly right. Uh, 2006 nominee for Courage. He's playing deaf out there, guys. Uh, there's a coach on the sidelines that actually signals the plays to him, sign language, and uh, doing a wonderful job playing hurt today. He's also the Mike Johnson Award for uh, Spirit and Enthusiasm. Martel Van Zant, your Dr. Pepper honor roll player of the week, guys. And, and Noxie, it, it, it amazes me to watch Van Zant play because he can't hear a whistle, and, and you just don't know when the play's over, he has to continue even longer than a lot of, a lot of uh, players have to. And there's his, his coach right there signing with him and conversing before the football game. And, and he signals in the, the defensive coverages and defensive calls to Van Zandt from the sideline. It, it, it's just, you talk about overcoming a handicap. That is just beyond words what Van Zandt has been able to yes. do at such a high level of uh, football. And a starter since midway through his sophomore season, so he's been an integral part of this program for quite some time. Senior from Tyler, Texas. Tied at 42, but that could change in a hurry. Harrell on second and a couple at the 11. Woods for the first down, he's got it. First and goal all the way to the seven. So they get the yardage when they need it on the ground, wrapped up by Patrick Levine, the outside linebacker. Texas Tech, they've been uh, handled in time of possession by over 10 minutes in the football game going into this uh, particular drive. Mike Leach says it's the most overrated statistic well, in football. I totally disagree and, and, against him, Dave. Right, with his offense, it's totally, uh, it, does, it makes no never mind whatsoever. But that fourth down that Oklahoma State could not convert at about midfield or just in the positive side for them offensively has been, has been a big factor, obviously, in this drive. First and goal between the six and the seven. Mike Leach wanted a timeout. Instead, throws corner of the end zone. Amendola couldn't hang on. Just out of his hands. Mike Leach was running down the sideline. Yes, he was. And then for a second there, I thought, well, it's one of those that you're glad it's not granted because it looks like Amendola's going to make the play. But he could not quite secure the football. Amendola in the slot, and they run a little crossing action and get to the back corner of the end zone. And, and boy, that's just perfect timing. Never did turn around to find the football, did Ricky Price, but he got his hand in there, right hand in there, at perfect timing to disrupt the rhythm of the play. 506 left. Two timeouts on the board for the Red Raiders, only one for the Cowboys. Harrow looking at Amendola's direction now, flushed out. Come back. It was Crabtree, and it was spiked away that time. Jacob Lacey. So we've seen nice back-to-back -back plays by Price and Lacey. Entry court. Well, you have, you have, uh, the field is constricted, the field is compressed, 
and, and you have it, it, there are, the, the holes are tighter for Texas Tech to try to take advantage of. And Oklahoma State has done a good job in the red zone here, actually in first and goal territory, of making those windows impossible for Harold to open and work with. Now, third down, can they hold it to a field goal attempt? Harold spreads it two to each side. Keeps Woods in the backfield. For Crabtree, pumped out of bounds by Lacey inside the three. Nice job. I mean, just absolutely plastering wide receivers in the, in the red zone here. And, and uh, Lacey does a good job of he gets he gets fooled on the on the post corner, but the, he, he recovers and, and reacts back and flies to the football, and knocks Crabtree out of bounds. Good job by both players right there. Both place kickers have missed long field goal attempts. A 51-yarder for Trilika. This is an extra point try for him, though. This is a 20-yard field goal attempt for the lead inside of five to play. Right pass, though. Can he hook it in? He does. And it's a lead in the final five for Texas Tech. Trying to stay undefeated. Trying to go to 4-0 and also take the Big 12 opener at Oklahoma State. Thompson's going to bring it back. Now Devereaux. Thompson across the 20 torpedo there. And looking back to, and I talked about this game. This is two trips ago in with a flag down on the play. It was 2003 season, October 18. Tatum Bell, 238 yards rushing on the day. 95 yards on that one. Texas Tech's B.J. Simmons. Fourth quarter touchdown. That one to Wes Walker. And then the Cowboys, D.J. Holland, finally put an end to it all with that interception. One of the wildest games in Big 12 history, 51 to 49 here at Oklahoma State. And, and when you look at this rivalry, this series here, Joel, the home team has won the last five games. Five in a row for the home team. And Texas Tech, their situation, they've, got a, a, they've won five straight. That's tied for the seventh longest winning streak in college football right now. Five straight victories for Texas Tech. Will it continue? Penalty took them half the distance to the goal. Back at the 11, it's a first down. Don't forget, they only need three for a tie. With 444 to play. It's going to be the delay. And bouncing his way up the middle, Savage for a little more than four. Just about five. Brought down by Paul Williams. It's interesting on that, looking back on the fourth down play, and those three points are a direct result of the failure on fourth and about a yard and a half. Every time they've tried a third and short or a fourth and short, they've gone to that power play where they have trips in the backfield all lined up on the left side or right side like an unbalanced line. Right. That time they didn't use that formation. They didn't. They ran a midline option type thing, a little reversed by the quarterback, and they're now two of four on fourth down. And that one was painful not to get. It'll be second, a little more than five, almost six. Savage got to make a decision. Can he get outside? Yeah. And a block from Robinson. And right at the marker at the 20. Needed the 21. He'll be short of the first down by one. You know, when you when you talk about when you talk about uh, Oklahoma State, a rallying point for the coaching staff is it didn't go as well as you had hoped with a one and two record mode in the preseason. But here's Big 12 season. It's a whole new season. Now, can we get off to a good start here? We're at home. It's a, it's a rallying cry. It's a, it's a way to get your troops re-motivated, and they've played well today. Can they finish this game? They didn't win close games early in the season last year and then learned in the bowl game against Alabama how to win a close game. Savage the single. They need a yard. Robinson calls his own number, and he's got it. Across the 21, out closer to the 22. He's behind the center, he's getting the start for the injured. David Washington. Washington gone for the year with a broken leg. Well, this is a sophomore snapping to a sophomore. And that's uh, Mr. Lewis at the center position just providing a personal convoy for his quarterback to generate the first down, Zach Robinson. you got to feel this may be the last shot for Oklahoma State, even though there's almost four minutes left. And I bring that up because of only one timeout. Savage, oh, wow. real miscommunication there on the exchange. Yeah. Savage, and it, was it a delay? Because if it was, he got there early. Ratliff cleaned up. 
You know, this is this a tough, a tough thing. It, it really, I, I don't know if it's almost a gadget or a gimmick or if he tried to make it look that way. And Mike Gundy just uh, kind of hanging his head a little bit there, saying that 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 came at a wrong time to have problems up front. Second tackle for loss for Texas Tech, and they both come at opportune times. It'll be second down and 14 after the last of four. Shift Savage over to the opposite side. And the ball thrown wide of Bryant, who cannot hang on. It was behind him. Working against Chris Parker. And now you're in a, in a situation, third and 13, 14. You don't want to face these long third down scenarios. And, and, and again, they started out 10 for 10 on third down, and they're three for their last nine. They've gone from 100% to 33%. Zach Robinson just six for his last 15 in the passing department after his nine for 15 in the first half. So just 16 yards on his last 10 attempts. Critical third down to say the least. Deep in his own territory, a ton of time coming back and lost it. The pop applied and it got away from Newton, who threw it perfectly for a touchdown earlier, but Chris Parker yep. really shocked him from behind. He did. He timed his hit perfectly, and, uh, you know, the Texas Tech rushed three. They only rushed three, so you can double almost all of them. They dropped eight into coverage, and he, even with that said, there was an opportunity to convert, but Chris Parker said, you know what? You're not going to hang on to that football, Seth Newton. You may have thrown a, a uh, gadget play touchdown, but you're not going to catch this ball on third and 14. Amendola waiting for the punt. And Matt Fives, the junior from Molina, Oklahoma. So a guy that's got good hands. A flag is down. Amendola lost it out of bounds at about the 32. There is a flag. I wonder if we have one of those deals where Oklahoma State voluntarily ran out of bounds while covering the kick. And then came back onto the field to play. The Cowboys just went three and out for only the second time of the game. Bad time for that. Trailing by a three with 2.44 left. With only one timeout on the board, Tech now with an opportunity to run out the clock. You need to think uh, if, you're, if you're Texas Tech in the huddle, Harrell saying to his guys, two hands on the football. Ball security is paramount right now. We can't afford any turnovers. I'm sure Mike Leach has talked about it. Face mask on the receiving team, 15 yard penalty, first down. That, that was during the blocking. That wasn't during the return, obviously, because Amendola just dropped the ball out of bounds. But it was when they were blocking the uh, the widest guy in coverage, and he got knocked out of bounds. I think they grabbed the face mask when they were trying to uh, curtail his effort to get down the football field. But that's a, that's a costly penalty. And then on the flip side, Oklahoma State is saying, look, we got to do everything we can to get the ball out. One guy stand him up, the other guys come in and rip at it. We've got to get the ball back. Texas Tech brings in a five-game winning streak. Started with last year's win over these same Cowboys. So Oklahoma State in Lubbock to close out the regular season. It continued. And that incredible comeback over Minnesota in the inside bowl. So now back at their 17, Texas Tech. Can they just run it out? Last drive was just under three minutes. That's all they have to do here. 2.44 to play. Underneath, Amendola past the 20 or check that instead of the catch. And it's rare. Eric Morris' is second grab. And, and the problem that Oklahoma State has, like you mentioned a couple of times, Joel, they can only stop the clock one more time. So if Texas Tech gets on a roll here and, and generates uh, a couple of first downs, you know, the, the clock stops on first down, but they can't do anything to stop it otherwise. Well, if you can get a stop here on second down, do you use your timeout? You've only got one left, and they're looking at third down after that. Harold moving by design, and oh. Dota off his fingertips. Like, he only could get one hand out there in time. Yep. Well, that'll stop the clock for them. They don't have to worry. That one would have uh, tied the record. That would have been the 15th catch of the game, tying Robert Johnson's single game reception mark. But Danny Amendola could not could not get two hands in the football. He just stretched the left hand out there. I guess he didn't want to dive and make sure that he got two hands out there. And he was trying to make a great catch, 
and get yards after catch. That time, I would have done everything I could just to make sure I caught the football, not worry about yards afterwards. It's third and seven. Biggest play of the game defensively for Oklahoma State. Harrell on the comeback. Packed to poked away from Crabtree. And well timed by Jacob Lucy. Well, he stayed late. He stood up big, and the Oklahoma State defense stood up big right there. One, two, three, and out. With this high powered, high octane Texas Tech offensive football team. And Harold got harassed. And he not only got harassed, he got taken to the ground rather unceremoniously. That's just good defensive pressure and then good coverage on the other end, closing on the football. You get any kind of return, you're already close to field goal territory as Parrish Cox waits back outside of his own 40. I guess it'd be fitting that this game does go to overtime the way these two teams have played. Surprised there's not been as much offensively on the board as we saw in the first half. So adjustments, but they both hurt themselves. LaCour wobbles one out. Cox from the 38. Makes the first miss and the second. But down to the 45, near the 46. So a couple of first downs away from Bill Gold territory. Our college football Saturday trip ahead will continue right after our game. We'll be joining the Rice Owls and the Texas Longhorns down in Austin. Coverage will start immediately after this one, right here on FSN in HD. Texas with an early lead. Oklahoma State final shot. One time out of the board. Minute 48 to play. What a grab. Wow. Wow. Look out, the tight end finally gets in. Wow. Pettigrew, touchdown wow. Oklahoma State. Do you believe it? Ooh, man. Talk about yards after catch at an opportune time. Man, and, and, as he did the old dive into the end zone, did Pettigrew land on the football? Did he land on his hip? Is he just fatigued? Is he just out of win? At any rate, he made Garcia miss in space. And the catch was made, and he made Garcia, Garcia miss the tackle, and he finished the play, and he gets hurt a little bit. Yeah, on his own, though. Yeah, he did in the to, end zone. Yeah, he didn't yeah. have to dive like that. No, nope. and, and the, the uh, showboating hurt him right there, but literally hurt him physically. How big is this extra point to make it a four point difference? Keep it away from the field goal try, Texas Tech. What a shot. Ricks. Out of the hold of Cole Reynolds. And it is a four point ball game. Oklahoma State has stunned the Red Raiders. 54 yards on the catch and run. By Brandon Pettigrew, the junior from Tyler, Texas. It was a gamble by the D-back. Yep, and, and, and he paid. His gamble came up snake eyes. But Zach Robinson makes a, makes a good throw of the football, and, and here's the miss by Garcia. I mean, he just loses. You know, you know when you duck your head and, and you lose, breaking down in a good football position, tremendous stiff arm right there, right to the smush of uh, wall, and takes it into the, into the end zone. And, Looks like he landed on his hip. Looks like he landed on his right hip, and Robinson's saying, thank you. Thank you, Pettigrew. I mean, you know, the thing is, like you said, Joel, they have to score a touchdown to win the game. Field goal doesn't no good. But if there's any team that can move in a minute and 37 seconds with two timeouts left, I'm telling you right now, the Oklahoma State sideline is not safe and secure. They are very, very concerned that this football game is certainly not over and with good right because Texas Tech's offense is geared to do this kind of thing. But Dave, when I mentioned during the actual play itself that the tight end finally involved, that's the first catch by a tight end from either team in this game. And, and Pettigrew, they went to Joel in that fourth and, and short one. And Zach Robinson threw the ball late and he threw the ball short. And Pettigrew, uh, no, that was both. Pettigrew had to, had to miss uh, in, to inside the 10 yard line, right, where he dropped the football. He should have had a catch on that particular play, and they couldn't put his team in first and goal situation. Short one for L.A. Reed. What can he do with it from the nine? Laying over to the right side of the 25. That's about it. They push him back from the 28. We're in time now for our Kiyosera wireless call to the game. Minute 48 to play. What a grab. Look out, the tight end finally gets in. Wow! Pettigrew, touchdown Oklahoma State! Do you believe it? I still don't. <laughs> the first down at the 28th for Texas Tech. 
Don't forget the Red Raiders still have two timeouts on the board, so that's a lot of time for this offense. And the consideration, if you get a stoppage with every first down, Harold with two to each side. And it's Crabtree. Flag on the play. Crabtree's got the first down anyway across the 40. Knocked out of the 41. Well, Harold now has 600 yards throwing the football. That 12-yard completion pitched him over the 600 mark. And let's see what the flag is. But, I mean, th this football team, they're never out of a football game, particularly if it's a one-score game, and it's less than a touchdown necessary to win the game. They need a touchdown to win it. They're down four. Field goal doesn't no good. But when, when they're within a one-score distance with any time on the clock, they're dangerous. We are five minutes away from the game reaching the four-hour mark. It'll be four hours old. So you had to figure, starting locally, 2.38, local in uh, Central Time, that the lights could come into play. And especially if we go an extra session. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Pass interference. Number 27 to the defense. A penalty is declined. First down. Didn't make any difference. Move the chains. We've got Mickens for being a little uh, early with his, with his coverage, but the catch was made. 602 yards. That's the exact number now for Graham Harrell. Jeez. He's out of the gun with Woods in the backfield. They need a touchdown. Crabtree, wow. how did he get open? Wow. Crabtree to the 20, all the way to the 17. How do you lose track of Crabtree? And I don't think they really did. I think it was just the excellence, excellence of a football player in Michael Crabtree. My goodness. Look at him just, he's running by the corner. It's cover two, safety can't get there. He found the soft spot in cover two behind the corner and stayed right on the sideline. That's where you have to be. Take it as far to the sideline as you can so the safety can't get over there over the top to help. And he beat the cover two knocks he was talking about. They tried to double him and he beat the double team, although the relationship between corner and safety wasn't good enough. Harrell on first down from the 17. Deflected and almost intercepted. Great read by Levine. All right, now, if you're Oklahoma State, you're going to have Rise up and make four plays in the red zone. Because Texas Tech, it's four down territory everywhere now, and they're in scoring zone. That's just a great break on the football. You get the hand up. Amendola, if he had caught that football, would have tied the record. He's still one short, and Crabtree's gaining. He's only two short. Amendola's got 14 catches. Crabtree has 13. Unbelievable. 61 seconds to play. Second and 10. Plenty of time for Harrell. On the comeback route, it's Crabtree. Not much, to only two yards for the 15. Clock moving. Take a timeout and make your best call with uh, 30 seconds to go. You have two on the board. Harrell on third and eight. Over the middle, deflected again. Levine is reading Harrell perfectly. Boy, I'll tell you, Joel, you have two receivers that have had phenomenal games. But they're getting a lot of attention paid to him right now. Amendola, he drifts. Amendola thought it was going to him, yeah. and, the, and the, the intended receiver was Morris. I thought it was deflected, but Levine was late. And he was behind Amendola. And Amendola's the one that defended the football from getting to Morris. Here's the ball game with 24 seconds to play, Dave. Amendola, 14 catches for 233 yards. Crabtree, 14 for 237. They've combined for 470 yards on 28 catches and four touchdowns. Ridiculous. Harold needs eight for a first down. Back of the end zone. Oh! Three can't hang on. That'll do it. Oklahoma State will survive. Man, I'll tell you, there was there was coverage in the area was Ricky Price. But that football was just a little bit behind Crabtree, and he made such great reactions for, to the football, but he couldn't make that one. And he's very, very disappointed. He's had a tremendous game, but he could not come up with this one. And Ricky Price is in the area. He's underneath. The ball's thrown, and it hits him right. It's, it hits him in the shoulder pad. I mean, it, it, it came yeah, up on him faster than he thought it would. Got into his body, didn't it? Yeah, he, he didn't extend his hands. It hit him in the shoulder pads and bounced away. Crabtree wasn't expecting the fastball. I guess he was expecting changeup, and the fastball hit him in the shoulder pads before he could react. Amazing. Oklahoma State, a totally different team at home. We mentioned that earlier. And they have survived. And we'll take this league opener.
The Big 12 conference opener between Texas Tech and boy for a young man a couple of years out of high school. Well, he's That's heart a backbreaker. Sick. He's heart sick, but what a game he had. 14 catches for 237 yards and three touchdowns. He put his team in position to win this game, but he is crestfallen right now because he knows that Harold hit him where he should have made the catch. And, and he, he, he got up on him faster than he get his hands out and couldn't extend his hands and to bounce off. Once you get it in that shoulder pad area, it can end up anywhere. It, it's fitting that this game came down to literally almost the last play of the football game. Time it has been used by Texas Tech. Back to Pettigrew's game-winning score. Boy, Pettigrew, did he make a play at, at a time in a timely fashion or not? He he, he catches it and, and pulls away from the first defender, makes the safety miss, stiff arms another. That is just an incredible individual effort right there. And how about a move like that from a guy that's 6'6", 260? He was honorable we'll mention all Big 12 last year. That's some shifty moves for a large man. Oh, he he is he's special. Six foot six. Graham Harrell is heart sick. I mean, when you, when you look at it, <laughs> he's only got 646 yards. He's 46 for 67 for 646 yards, five touchdowns, and is going to lose. Are you kidding me? Texas Tech has one more time out, and they'll use it. Bryson, Texas, right after this game. So the Owls and the Longhorns, Longhorns' early lead, will be headed that direction down to Austin. In just a moment. How do you throw for almost 650 yards, five touchdowns, and lose the game? Well, it's the other team has three guys rush for 100 yards apiece or more. 368 on the ground for yeah. Oklahoma State and 244 through the air. Savage went for 130, Robinson went for 116, and Hunter went for 113, and, and they rushed for a combined four touchdowns. Robinson had two, and Savage and Hunter had one apiece, so they offset the air attack of Texas Tech with their own ground attack. It was it was the tale of two games basically one did it one way one did it the other That's the last time tech can stop the clock. They're just hoping for a poor exchange by the quarterback and the center Well, we expected a high scoring game and did it live up to its billing that'll remind you of 51 49 in 2003 here at Oklahoma No doubt no doubt when the Cowboys prevailed in Stillwater four years ago So a phenomenal effort by Michael Crabtree one that got away, though, is going to be remembered. And Zach Robinson, in his second career start, memorable. Great college football game, Dave. Really entertaining. Uh, you don't get any better. I mean, this was an offensive show, period. Well, for Dave Lapp and Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for being with us every step of the way in Stillwater. It was a classic. Oklahoma State in the Big 12 opener prevailed by 449-45 of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Coming up next, we continue with our triple header on FSN. It's Rice at number six, Texas. You've been watching Big 12 football, and it will continue now on FSN in HD.